one city synonymous with country music, Nashville, Tennessee, resonating with melodies and riffs of heartfelt dramas. Today's drama involves greener pastures. William Green of Boston College, country strong. And David Green of Georgia, beating the Bulldogs drum, ready to go the country mile. College Eagles out of the Big East, led by their head coach, Tom O'Brien. BC coming into this contest with a record of seven and four. ESPN College Football presents the Battle of the Big East against the SEC. It's Boston College against number 19, Georgia, at Adelphia Coliseum in Nashville, Tennessee. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones along with Chris Spielman. Hey, from all of us here at ESPN to all of you at home, all the best in the upcoming new year, 2002. Chris, let's talk about Boston College and their offense. When you look at the guy that makes the offense go, the key cog is William Green. 15 touchdowns this year, arguably the number one running back in the country. Yeah, we're not the only ones that think that, Mark. I was talking to a person from the NFL who's on the advisory board who tells underclassmen where they're going to fall in the draft. This gentleman told me William Green's a first-round pick. If you watch him, he's powerful. And I said, who do you like him to in the NFL? Fred Taylor? He said, exactly. That's a great comparison. He's got the speed that Fred Taylor has, he can go the distance. High praise for Green. Meanwhile, on the other side of the ledger, there were a lot of question marks for Georgia coming into the season. Brand new head coach, Mark Richt. But at quarterback, that was going to be a key question mark as well. All questions seem now to have been answered with when David he, Green. Yeah, Mark, anytime you have a new quarterback, especially a young quarterback, the one question that needs to be answered, does he have composure? Well, he proved that he had composure against Tennessee. In the final minutes of the football game, he makes some crucial plays, throws some great passes, good decision-making. In fact, he hits for Ron Hayes here on the check down for the winning score. David Green is only a freshman, but he plays like an upperclassman, a stout football player. You know, one thing about those fans down in Athens, Georgia, very, very particular, very particular. One guy who was able to put some smiles on their collective faces this year is their first-year head coach, Mark Richt, who's standing by with Holly Rowe. Holly? Coach, you've been in a lot of big games, the national championship game last year, but you weren't the head coach. Is this different, and what are your emotions? It's not a whole lot different than any other game this year, being a head coach. I'm just excited about being here and having a chance to play one more time and uh, hopefully get a ninth victory. You've got a young quarterback. What was your sense that his attitude was before the game? Any jitters? Oh, no, he's in good shape. He's, he's really not a rookie anymore. He's played 11 games, so uh, he's in good shape. The worst question of all, Willie Green, how do you contain him on defense? Well, you just got to tackle well. I think we'll get people in position to make the tackle, but they've got to make the tackle. If they don't, we're going to be in trouble. All right. Thank you very much, Coach. Right. Meanwhile, the other half of the Brain Trust, Tom O'Brien, the fifth-year head coach, says the importance of this game to his crew is that they have to prove they can beat a top 25 team. They have not beaten a ranked opponent in 21 consecutive games. A cool and sunny day here in Nashville, Tennessee. Cool. All a matter of perspective, some 50 degrees, 35 percent humidity with the wind that is blowing across the field. So that might prove to be just a little bit tricky for the place kickers. BC wins the toss. They have deferred to the second half. Georgia will receive. Some 45,000 on hand here today in Nashville, Tennessee, where country music is king. The team trying to make some winning music on the field today. Terrence Edwards and Fred Gibson back deep. Gibson at the goal line. On the reverse. To DeCorey Bryant. Bryant! Oh, what a return! Mark Rigg pulls a fast one on the opening kickoff. 81-yard return. You can see the Florida State and Mark Rick right there. Bobby Bowden forever has been known as a trickster and a gambler. I love the way they start this football game. They have nothing to lose. They want to come out and make a big play, make a gamble. It pays off. What a great job by Georgia in executing the reverse on a kickoff return. All the way down, Chris, to the 14-yard line. Georgia leads the SEC in kickoff returns. 
There's evidence. First and ten. Green at quarterback. And he's sacked back at the 16-yard line by Scott Bradley. Let's take a look at the starting quarterback, David Green, with the redshirt freshman. Completed 59% of his passes this year with 17 touchdown tosses. The skill people behind him, led by Veron Haynes, J.T. Wall, in the backfield, some key and good receivers, Edwards and Gibson. Big targets, Mark. Very big, fast targets. Second down and 11. Gibson in motion. Gibson, who got a good block. Touchdown, Georgia! A 15-yard catch and run. And in just 55 seconds of play, the Bulldogs taking a 6-0 lead. Again, another good call, Mark. You get the hands into a guy that could run. What they did was they outflanked Boston College's defense. They had more. And the extra point is good for the Bulldogs as Bennett knocks it through. More blockers than defenders, Mark. That's what I'm talking about, being outflanked. Gibson, meanwhile, a little shaken up on the bench. Well, actually, this is a lateral. Well, that's a downfield pass. But there's a great block by Gray. And I talked about speed. Once he received that football, you saw the burst in power and his will to want to get in the end zone. I always talk about this, Mark. Receivers blocking downfield. You see Damian Gary with the block downfield. Jermaine Edwards, or Terrence, excuse me, Terrence Edwards with a block downfield. When you can get your receivers blocking downfield, you get big plays. So in just 55 seconds, the Bulldogs take a 7-0 lead as Gibson is checked out on the sidelines. And there's the look of a sly fox on the sidelines. Mark Richt, you mentioned the Bobby Bodden in him. 8-3 on the season, 5-3 in conference play. 2-3 against top 25 opponents. They played a very tough schedule. And 4-1 and on the road this year. Meanwhile, Boston College finishing up 7-4 overall. Tied for third in the Big East. Three of the four losses were against top 25 teams. They finished up 5-1 and one at home. The one loss, of course, that tough one, which went down to the dying seconds against the University of Miami. Mark, this is a chance for Boston College now. They have to come out, and I'm not saying that they have to score a touchdown, but they have to establish at least a drive. Burke and Camella back deep for Boston College. This is Camella at the 18. Rocked at the 27-yard line. Starting quarterback for Boston College is Brian St. Pierre, a six-foot-four-inch junior, a first-year starter who threw a touchdown pass in every game that he's played this year. Meanwhile, behind him, William Green, the best running back arguably in the country, along with Camella, Burke, DeWalt, and Ryan. Ryan's going to be a part of this offense. Dana Bible, the offensive coordinator, wants their tight end involved in the passing game. Georgia this year struggled against the pass. They were stout against the run, and this is William Green stopped up after a gain of about one by the strong safety, Jermaine Phillips. Let's take a look at the offensive line for Boston College. A good group, Colombo, Seed, Copen, Parento, and Bell is not starting. In his place, it'll be number 69, Frank Wilpert from Oak Ridge, New Jersey. Yeah, Colombo's a great athlete for his size, like an offensive tackle that you love to have. He has that big, long wingspan, like a 747 wingspan. Going up against Charles Grant and the rest of the gang, Pollock, Veal, and Sullivan. Grant leading the team with six sacks. Second down and eight. St. Pierre pulls it down. He's brought down just beyond the 30-yard line, about five yards shy of the first down. It'll be third down at about five to go. Let's take a look at the linebackers for the Bulldogs. Witherspoon, Tony Gilbert, and Boss Bailey, the brother of Champ Bailey, Gilbert in the middle. And Gilbert's in the middle at 250 pounds. It's tough to move out of there. On the corners, it'll be Bryant and Thornton. Inside, Curry gets the start for Biera along with Phillips. Jermaine Phillips, the young question leader. Graduate student for Georgia Bulldogs. Third down and six on Boston College's open drive of the game. 
And Pierre fires incomplete. Intended for Jamal Burke. And Kevin McMiler will come in to punt for the Eagles. Yeah, Jamal Burke pulled up on his route a little bit. He came out of his route, he kind of stopped. He wasn't expecting that football. St. Pierre thought he was going to continue the sidelines. Burke stopped his route. He's got to finish the route. Keep in mind that Georgia led the SEC in punt returns this year. So the special teams for Boston College with its work cut out for them. Miller has his 43.2 per punt. It's off a low line drive this time. Fielded on the run by Gary. There's a flag down. And Gary is brought down to the 36-yard line. Boston College violating that two-yard halo. That you're supposed to give to the punt returner. Nick Define, our referee today in the white hat. Interference on the two-yard belt on the kicking team. It's a five-yard penalty. First down. You know, sometimes, folks, it pays when you roll the dice. And Georgia did that right off the opening kickoff and converted on this Gibson touchdown. The Bulldogs with the lead when we come back. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Mark Jones, along with Chris Spielman and Holly Rowe at Adelphia Coliseum on the banks of the Cumberland River here in Nashville, Tennessee. Huh? Get with the network inside the line. 7-0, Georgia out of the gate real quickly after a long kickoff return on the opening play of the game. Green going up top. Incomplete, intended for Terrence Edwards. He was being covered by the tall Lenny Walls. That was a catchable ball, Chris. That was, was a great throw. Now, Walls has pretty decent coverage, but he loses sight of the receiver. Now, when you have a deep route, the one thing you want to do is keep your head on the receiver. If you don't, you'll see that he'll pull away from you, get to the side. Walls has got to keep vision on the receiver and turn when the receiver turns. Out of the backfield, complete to Damian Gary. Brought down right around the line of scrimmage at the 43-yard line. Let's take a look at the group up front for Georgia. It includes Foster, Alex Jackson, McGill, Breedlove, and Stinchcomb. Kurt McGill, the leader of that group. Going up against this defensive front, Sean Guthrie off the edge along with Rossi. Martin and Goodwin inside. Guthrie, the big-time pass rusher. Third down and seven. They give it to Haynes, and Haynes is still on his feet. Veron Haynes breaking a couple of tackles, finally brought down by Doug Bissett. Veron Haynes emerging as a key player late in the season. Let's take a look at the linebackers, Bradley, Churchu, and Ott for Boston College. Bradley, the team captain. Walls and White in the secondary on the corners. Walls was the guy who was covering Edwards moments ago. Bissett and Parent to the safety. A pickup of 32 yards. Haynes again down near the 20-yard line. David Green, a six-foot-three-inch redshirt freshman, the SEC's freshman of the year, completing 59% of his passes coming in. The coach is saying that they were really surprised by how well he did early in the season. Well, they're also confident, Mark, because they come out and are going no huddle with him right now. You see it coming on a blitz, and it's on the ground. The Eagles have it. Josh Ott, the Sam linebacker, recovered the loose ball. And it's the first turnover of the game. That was something BC needed. Again, you'll see that Ron Haynes has to control the football, especially when you're trying to spin for extra yardage like he is right here. They do a great job of stripping the football, and Scott Bradley of getting a hand in there and getting it out. Right there, the ball's out. Scott Bradley with the club gets it out. Now, running backs are often tight. Look, when you're struggling for extra yardage, what you want to do is protect the ball. Ball security, number one rule. First down and 10 coming back the other way from the 19-yard line. William Green got a few yards after the initial contact out to the 22-yard line. William Green, a six foot one inch junior, 215 pounds, out of Atlantic City, New Jersey, led the Big East 
with over 1,500 yards rushing to go along with 15 touchdowns. Take a good look at him, folks. He might not be in college football much longer. Now, what George is doing, Mark, is they're bringing up Jermaine Phillips and they're playing him in a linebacker position. They want to take William Green out of the game, bring his safety up, line him at linebacker. You don't have enough people to block him. They go to Green again. He can run in between the tackles, but that time finding a lot of resistance led by David Pollock, the defensive tackle. Let's go downstairs to Holly. Guys, something to keep your eye on. William Green, the running back for Boston College, has had the flu all week. He has been very dehydrated and was receiving an IV in the locker room before the game. We'll be curious. We'll have to see how his endurance lasts throughout this game, particularly when he's getting so many carries here early. A good point, Holly. Interesting news. No wonder I didn't see him around the hotel lobby much this week. Getting well in his room. Third down and six. Pass complete for the first down out to the 32-yard line to Jamal Burke. And it's the first first down of the game for Boston College. Burke, a six-foot, one-inch junior. He's really improved this season. And uh, how do you beat the blitz, Mark? They come with the blitz here. You've got to understand where the hot read is going to be and which hot read is going to be open. That time, Brian St. Pierre found Burke, who was the open hot read, and delivered the football without panic. Took his time and delivered a strike. Boston College's offense beginning to get on track just a little bit here with 9-10 to play in the first period. Down the middle of the field intended for the tight end, Frank Mizzarelli. It's incomplete. Thrown a little bit behind him that time. This is how you attack cover, too. You want to get the tight end down in the middle of the field to put pressure on the safeties, and it's a good throw. Actually, Jermaine Phillips does a nice job, and he's been all over the football field for the Georgia defense. He's been, made four tackles that I've counted a tip fast. That was a nice recovery. If he didn't get his fingers on that, that was a big gainer for Boston College. St. Pierre has to put a little bit more air under that ball. Brings up the second down and ten. Green with a little room this time, and William Green is out near the 40-yard line. It'll be third down and about three to go for Boston College. Now, the one thing you'll notice what they did was they brought the receiver in motion. And what that does is that slows down the pursuit from the backside because the reverse must be honored. That allows William Green time to separate and get some, uh, some separation at that line of scrimmage because there's nobody closing down because they have to honor the reserve re reverse play in the outside defenders. Boston College, 41% in third down situations this year. Camella, the lone back, as Ray goes in motion, and Boston College has to burn a timeout. A little bit of confusion for the Eagles. Tom O'Brien will straighten things out on the sidelines when we come back. Back here at Adelphia Coliseum, I'm Mark Jones, along with Chris Spielman and Holly Rowe down on the sidelines. A pivotal third down and three coming up for Boston College. They have the ball on their own 39-yard line. As their head coach, Tom O'Brien, watches from the sidelines. A flag down, the pass intended for Keith Hemmings, who is being covered by Bruce Thornton, number seven. That's a good read by Brian St. Pierre because what happens is when they have the corner pressed on the wide receiver, that's an option route by the wide receiver. What I mean by pressed, Mark, is that he's playing real tight to him. So the receiver knows... Defense, pass interference, 15 yards from the previous spot, first down. The receiver knows he's got to take him deep when he has press coverage, and you'll see it right here. There's Thornton right on him. He's in his face, got in, in the face. He punched him in the face right there. But... And there's a, the interference right there. He's got to turn his head and look for the ball. When that receiver's hands go up, you have to turn and look and lean. Thornton didn't look and lean that time. Gives the Eagles the first down and 10 from Georgia's side of midfield at the 45. Green on a little counter. William Green down to the 39-yard line. Tackled by Boss Bailey, the strong side linebacker. The Big East, folks has enjoyed a good measure of success in the three previous seasons here in the Music City Bowl. Look at that. Virginia Tech, Syracuse, and West Virginia all vanquishing their SEC foes. 
said last year, I believe, that the Big East would be in the yep, Big Ten East. moves in next year. Big Ten moving in. Second down and three. Camella and Green out of the eye. Green. About two yards short of the first down, brought down by Tony Gilbert, the team's leading tackler on defense for Georgia. 6'1", 246-pound junior. When you watch William Green, the one thing that has impressed me so far is that he never gets knocked backwards. He's always falling forward. The initial contact is getting everything and maximizing each run. That's a good running back that can do that. As fierce as a competitor as Coach O'Brien has ever been associated with. That's what he says. Third down and one for Boston College. Green slipped. Falls forward just at the first down marker. Looks as if he's got it. He was tackled once again by Bailey. It looks like they're going to give them the first down. We have an injured player down in the field. It's the center, Dan Copen, and that would be if he can continue. Don't want to speculate, but he is a key cog in their offense. I don't know if that's Copen or not. I think it, it might be Parento. Right. Yeah, Seven Copen, three. you're right. Copen's a guy that, uh, although all those guys are valuable, Copen is a guy that makes all the calls for the offensive lineman, tells them how to block certain plays according to the fronts on defense. Great relationship between Copen. There he is. The center and the starting quarterback, Brian St. Pierre, the two of them are roommates. They've developed some great chemistry between the two, which really pays off on the field. Absolutely. It's good to see the big fella jog off there and all his offensive linemen are giving him a hand. They, they're, they're bonding. They're buddies. They, they like to see those big fellas stay healthy. They don't get much love either. No. Tonight at 830, Capital One Bowl, we continuing on ESPN with the Culligan Holiday Bowl. Longhorn quarterback Major Applewhite. Yeah, he's getting the start. Leads number nine, Texas, against the 20th-ranked Washington Huskies. Defensive standout Larry Triplett. And during the game, folks, log on to ESPN.com and play Verge Friday with our coaches Jim Donnan and Dick Tomey. Here's Green. The ninth play of the drive, Tony Gilbert makes the tackle on Green. So far, Mark, the Georgia linebackers have impressed. Why do I say that? Because when they're making contact with the offensive line, they're making contact with them at the line of scrimmage, and they're not staying on blocks. They're defeating blockers, not giving one for one, and making the play. That's good, solid linebacker play. Good news for Boston College, Chris. Parento back in the ballgame at his starting right guard spot. Second down and ten. A three receiver formation. William Green in the backfield for BC. Complete to Red. Who's brought down at the 27 yard line. About three yards short of the first down. It'll be third down coming up for Boston College. Now, Chris, we talked about it a few moments ago. Sometimes you can run the same thing out of different looks about formations, right? Well, absolutely. And Boston College will give you a ton of formations. They'll give you 12 personnel, 21 personnel, different types of combinations of backs and tight ends, three wides, one wide, all kind of different formations. Run the same plays, but with different people. A lot of motion, Mark, to try to confuse the defense. So far, they've run it nine times to four passes. Backs out of the eye, and they run it to Green. Gets to the edge and got a good block. William Green with the first down at the 15-yard line. And some good blocking downfield by Dedrick DeWalt, number 11. Among other receivers, a 13-yard pickup for William Green. Again, you'll see Dedrick DeWalt, a receiver, blocking downfield. Camella getting out there, getting a nice job of getting his hands slowed up, grabbing a little shirt there, right there. But again, DeWalt getting a nice job. And I talk about this every week that we do a game. Receivers blocking downfield. Got, has his hands inside. Now, when you have your hands inside, usually you won't get called for holding. But the court of green, about four more yards on the play. First and 10 from the 15. They're going to ride William Green, and why not? And if you watch Green run, sometimes he delivers the blow as opposed to receiving the blow. 
Well, he just delivered one on Jermaine Phillips. I'll tell you that. Jermaine sat there and gave him five, and William gave him five back, which I like to see in that sportsmanship. But you see William Green, again, the, the power of falling forward and not going down with the initial hit. That's what makes a good running back. You can't go down with the initial hit or you'll just be a guy. You've got to be something other than a guy. <laughs> Averaging a little over four yards per rush. Green with a split personality off the field. Kind, gentle, sociable on the field. A menace. Menacing that Bulldog defense down to the five-yard line, tackled by Gilbert. You're going to take a look at the power O. This is the, the term used when you're talking about people pulling. You have your fullback leading the play. Then you have your backside guard, Parento, coming around. Now, Green, again, vision, doesn't follow his blockers. He sees a hole. He's going to cut it up inside and go where the hole is. It, that's instinct. You don't always have to run with a play design as long as you go to the hole. They're three or four, Chris, in third down in the situation today. Third and one. And St. Pierre keeps it himself. And moves the pile into, well, about the four-yard line. First down, Boston College, goal to go. St. Pierre, pretty big guy himself, Chris, at 6'4", 217. Well, he's a big, and you can run a quarterback sneak when you have a guy that size, but that time, BC's offensive line won the battle against Georgia's defensive line because they were able to uh, take the initial hit but still get a surge forward, which allowed St. Pierre to get the first down. Their pad level was better than Georgia's pad level. Well, they call it the red zone, but it's more about the green zone. Money time. 31 to 38 inside the 20 this year. St. Pierre falls, and they're gonna have to spot this for a loss back at the seven yard line. Like he had some trouble pulling back. Uh, I think I think his roommate stepped on his foot. <laughs> He'll be talking about that one today. <laughs> Dude, that was your fault. No, man, that was your fault. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Oh, the guard, guard steps down on his foot, taking his pass set. Strong inside foot. That's what those linemen do on a pass set. We'll see his foot steps on his left foot right there, and that hurts. Ooh. Trust, believe me, I know when you have an inch and a half cleat driven through your top of your foot, that hurts. The 16th player of the drive coming up for Boston College, second and goal. The Walton motion. Green out of the backfield. The Bulldogs swarming to the ball. Bring him down at the eight-yard line. The pack was led by Chris Clemens, number 48, and David Pollock. It'll be third down and goal for BC. You know, I'm, I'm sort of a fan of defensive football, and the one thing that makes great... Sort of. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> what makes great defense is, is deep team defense. And how do you define team defense? I only define it one way, by guys running the football. Now, St. Pierre had a late read. William Green was open early, but look at that. Guys converging all over the place. That's great team football, and that's how you play defense. I don't see it enough in college football, but I am seeing it from this full-on defense right now. A look into the eyes of Tony Gilbert of Georgia on third and goal. Incomplete and 10 for the tight end who is open, Sean Ryan. And in comes the field goal unit for Boston College. <laughs> Yeah, Mark, earlier uh, earlier when he tried to go to the tight end, he didn't put enough air under the ball. Now he's down in the red zone. You don't have to put a lot of air under the ball. He put too much air on that ball. That's one where you got to throw that line drive. He knows it. He said, Chris, you're right. I should have threw the line drive instead of throwing the lofter. Go the line drive, he would have a touchdown. That was open in the end zone. Scorotino in to attempt the field goal, and he just sneaks it inside the upright. So the Eagles are on the board. Here in the fourth annual Music City Bowl. It's seven to three when we come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2001 Music City Bowl is brought to you by Nashville. Have you thought about visiting Music City USA lately? And by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Look at the glow of nighttime beginning to descend on Nashville, Tennessee, here in Music City. Other six. Hey, you saw him before the game. His shoulders are stacked with muscle, man, but the hind legs, I don't know, Chris. Ugga, Ugga needs to start squatting. He's doing a lot of upper body, biceps and chest look good. He needs to work on the legs. Uh, Gibson, four yards deep.
Another good return by the Bulldogs out to the 32-yard line. At 1.31 to play in the first quarter, a 33-yard return. We're here at Adelphia Coliseum, the fourth annual Music City Bowl. Matchup between the Big East and the SEC. It's Boston College against number 19, Georgia. I'm Mark Jones along with Chris Spielman and Holly Rowe on the sidelines. From all of us here at ESPN to all of you at home, all the best in the upcoming new year. Georgia jumped out to a 7-0 lead courtesy of an 82-yard kickoff return on the game's opening play. But BC, after a 16-play drive just moments ago, kicked a field goal to make it 7-3. Green complete to Damian Gary, still up. Two missed tackles by Boston College. That has been the bane of the defense this year. Here you have, you're going to have an option right off of the bootleg. Gary's going to read the coverage and break it either in or out. Right here, he breaks it out, uses his speed to outrun the linebacker to the sidelines. Then the one thing, if you're Boston College, and you're Frank Spaziano, you want your guys to make tackles. You cannot miss tackles against this football team because they'll hit a big play on you. David Green, complete to his tight end, Randy McMichael. A 6'4 junior with a lot on his mind. I'll tell you more about that later. Folks, tomorrow at noon Eastern time, Capital One Bowl Week continues on ESPN with the Motor City Bowl and the MAC champion Toledo Rockets with All-American running back Chester Taylor roll into Detroit to face quarterback Gino Gadulu and Cincinnati. Ron Hayes brought down by Parent. As we go under a minute to play now in the first period, there's a look at the defensive coordinator, Frank Spaziani. His team has had trouble defending the run at times this year. Well, yeah, and, and I see why, because they have one guy on the tackle as opposed to what we witnessed with Georgia's defense when we had 11 red hats flying in the football. They run it again. Josh Ott making the stop. That was a good, good solid tackle by Ott right there. He kept his head up. He one stepped and wrapped, two stepped and squeezed. And was able to stand a big man up. That's tough to stand a big man up running full speed downhill, shoulders north and south. Ron Hayes is that. Second down and six, the backs out of the eye. And Green has to throw it away. Fred Gibson was the nearest receiver. Tom Martin was in on the pressure for Boston College with 19 seconds to go in the first. And they had his own blitz on there. Why? Because Sean Guthrie, the defensive man and their best pass rusher, was dropped back covering the out. That's what Coach Spaz has to do to get pressure on these guys. He's not a big man-to-man -man guy. Not a big man-to-man -man team. A big zone pressure team. Third down and six. Incomplete intended for Terrence Edwards. That's the second one, Chris, that has gone through his arms today. And I allude back to an earlier part of the season for Georgia when Edwards had some problems hanging onto the ball. Yeah, that's that's been a uh, he's improved the last four games, but the, the problems that he has has hanging on to the football. Now Walls does a good job of getting in there. That ball should have been caught because Walls' hand was a little bit late. But that's a ball you have to catch, and, and David Green delivered it where he needed to deliver it. He hit him right in the numbers. That's a good throw. you got to make the catch. Fourth down and six, and the Bulldogs are going to go for it. They're nine of 18 on the season in fourth down. BC coming with a blitz. Haynes on the screen. And it's going to be real close, down to the 27-yard line. That's the perfect call against a blitz, but did he get it? Well, somebody's got to be accountable for him in man-to-man. -man. They're, they're ran a blitz, then you have to pick up the back on the screen. And how you tell that, there's a short set by the offensive lineman. And when they start all running to the sidelines, you got to start yelling, screen, screen, screen. Then again, Veron Haynes catches the ball and falls forward. Can't emphasize how important that is for a running back to always go forward. He's a big back at 223. Didn't make it. Coach Spaziani's defense wins the first battle of the game. I like the call, though. I like going for it on fourth down. Coach Rick left the, left the conservative play calling card at home. <laughs> he is a Bobby Bowden disciple, after all. Right here, Mark, I want to show you. See, there's a short set. That means they're not getting any depth on their set. Then they all start running the sidelines. That means these guys got to start running the sidelines and watch for Ron Hayes. If he does get this, Haynes, excuse me, 
That's a good job of the defensive lineman. How you stop screens and draws. Defensive lineman downfield making a play. That was a great job by Goodwin running down there and hustling and getting Haynes down before he got the first down. Four seconds to go in the first period. Little flea picker. Complete to DeWalt. And a first down at the Georgia 42-yard line. Coach O'Brien's got some tricks, too. Sure does. And that's the last play of the first period. Whatever you can do, hey, we can do, too, says Coach O'Brien. Back for the second quarter after this. Look at the brand spanking new Country Music Hall of Fame in downtown Nashville, Tennessee, where country music is king. All your favorites on display there, Johnny Cash. Travis Trick, some of your favorites too. Yeah, Chris, you huh? and I were in there yesterday. Yeah. I didn't know you were such a big country music guy. I'm versatile. You are. <laughs> <laughs> the Whale and Jennings on display. Yeah. Brian Carter, that's his favorite, our producer. First down and 10. Read in motion. And William Green brought down. And the 21-yard line by Jonathan Sullivan. Well, this game started off with a frenetic pace. The game's opening kickoff, Gibson handed it off to DeCorey Bryan on the reverse, and he went 86 yards within scoring range. They got a touchdown two plays later. You got a big-time receiver get the ball in his hands. There, Green delivers to Gibson on the screen, takes it in for six. A 15-yard reception, and Willie Green showing his power and speed. 11 carries for 46 yards. A three receiver formation, green in the backfield on second and nine. Georgia Blitzen. And St. Pierre got it away just in the nick of time. <laughs> Bailey and Gilbert, the linebackers, coming with the pressure. Again, you're going to see uh, zone pressure here. This is called a Sam and Mike blast. That's a Sam backer. That's the Mike backer. They're hitting it both on the same side, bringing five off of one side. When you're able to do that, you outnumber the offensive lineman. St. Pierre did a good job of getting out of trouble. He's not the fastest guy in the world, but he's quick enough to get away from trouble and make a good decision to throw the ball out of bounds. The Bulldogs, meanwhile, Chris, calling a timeout on third down and nine. Just underway here in the third quarter. We'll be back to Nashville right after this. The last time Boston College met Georgia, the 86 Hall of Fame Bowl. Holleran to Kelvin Martin on the touchdown with just 32 seconds to play. And BC coming away with a 27-24 victory. They are one and two against Georgia all time. This is the fourth meeting between the two crews. Third down and nine for the Eagles. Goes to the ball in the 41-yard line of Georgia. Again, you see them motioning and switching their personnel, switching the formations, trying to confuse that Georgia defense. The play fake. And incomplete in and out of the arms of Jamal Burke. That should have been a first down. That was dropped. Again, they're attacking in the middle of the field versus a cover, too. Why? Because you have a linebacker that is responsible for getting inside there. Burke gets behind him. He's got to catch the football. That's a well-thrown ball by St. Pierre. He's knocked him in the face mask. Did knock him in the face mask. Yeah. If you're going to give, take your shots, you might as well catch the ball and take your shot instead of dropping the ball and taking your shot. Myler to punt once again. Fair catch back at the nine-yard line. Let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Craig, the Boston College offensive coordinator, Dana Bible, told me before the game that he was concerned about the athleticism of Georgia's defensive line. He knew that they would put eight guys in the box and that they had incredible athletes with speed and quickness. He thought the only way for his O-line to combat that was with some toughness. He felt like they did that against Miami when they almost knocked off the number one team, the Hurricane. But so far tonight, we've seen them struggling a little bit. They've got to pick up their energy level and maybe do a little bit more tough maneuvering on the O-line. All right, Holly, we'll see what happens next time they get the ball. Right now, it's George's turn. And Green fires incomplete at the 20-yard line. 
intended for Damian Gary. Another drop football. Seen a few by both teams so far. David Green does a nice job again. Again, they're big play action pass team. Mark Rick believes in play action. You haven't seen much drop back except out of shotgun. They're running that bootleg, and that was a good throw because he delivered the outcut thrown across his body, rolling to his right knee and left hand. A difficult throw. Sets up a second down and ten for the Bulldogs. Green completes it this time. Out to the 24 is LeBron Mitchell. He was working on Lenny Walls, the tall corner. Mitchell, one of the captains, making the catch. The 6'2 senior, a pickup of 16 yards and a first down. They're playing a cover three here, and you'll see Walls playing deep and off. Now, that's just a little bit too much cushion. Why? Because you're giving him point to get to the first down mark. you got to get a little tighter on the coverage. Haynes running the ball out to the 29-yard line. Ron Haynes got his chance when Smith got injured. He grew up on the blacktops in the Bronx, New York, playing basketball instead of football. He's a transfer from Western Kentucky. He's come a long way since his first high school practice when he came out to practice with his knee pads on his hips. <laughs> Hadn't had it figured out yet. Second down and six. Pass complete to Mitchell once again. And it's another first down for the Bulldogs. When you have a quarterback like Green that can make that outcut throw, which is one of the most difficult passes in football to throw, that's how you attack a zone pressure or a cover three team. They're doing that because that's the weak part of the defense. Georgia not wasting much time up to the line of scrimmage. They give it to the fullback for the first time in the game. J.T. Wall brought down by Guthrie. When we say fullback, Chris, we mean full at 257. Yeah, I think he's uh, some car keys in a pocket from 260. <laughs> I don't know if he's 257. That's, that looks a little bigger than 257. Car keys and maybe even a biscuit. Yeah. <laughs> Second down and sevens. Plenty of Georgia fans on hand today. They've been designated as the home team for this game. Green under pressure gets it off. And a first down out of the 40-yard line. Mitchell three times in a row on the reception. Looks like he's found himself a favorite target, a pickup of 19. Now you notice now they're going to go to the no huddle after a big play. But what happens here, Mark, when you play a cover two, and we talk about this all, linebackers have to get depth. If they don't get depth, the safeties have no chance. They have to take away the middle of the field. Green fires complete to guess who? Mitchell. That's four in a row. Again, you got to like Green's ability to create and make something happen and not look to throw the football but by time for his receivers it's tough to cover those guys all day long then deliver the football now I like what George is doing here they're not giving Boston College time to catch their breath they're going no water taking control on the initiative well, BC won the time of possession battle in the first period but things turning around here green to pass Gibson got turned around a little bit and couldn't close on the ball quickly enough he was working on Peter Sean yeah, actually, he does a nice job here because he's running a deep out cut, in which you'll see he'll just on the football. Right there is the out, but no, he's going to just on the football, and that's a good job of being aware and Green being aware of reading each other, knowing where to throw the football. We talked about the time of possession. This is the ninth play of the Georgia drive coming up. on the handoff up high and down hard at the 23 is Veron Haynes. Haynes has been bothered by a groin injury for most of the season. Estimates put him at about, not quite 100, about 85% for this game, but he looks like he's running hard, Chris. Yeah, he's running hard. He's running full speed. And I, I'll tell you, just th that shot right there, if you're up in the air and you get your legs stretched out, that'll take the groin. His groin seems fine to me. Third and four. First down at the 13-yard line. It looked like he was trapped initially, but escaped. 
Perrin making a stop. Well, he was trapped because BC had a safety blitz out. Bissett comes in and gets a mouthful of offensive linemen. You'll see the safety blitz right there. Here's Bissett. He got KO'd. Now, there's a nice job of Bradley coming around and Haynes being patient, hitting the open hole, and a good job of Perrin of wrapping up a big back in the open field. You see Bradley get cut off from the backside. He's got to get over the top of that block. Play pick, picked off. Tipped at the line and picked off by the Eagles. Josh Ott comes up with the ball after the tip. The second turnover of the game by the Bulldogs. By number 45, Josh Ott. Right now, let's go to Chris Fowler in the studio. Mark, better remind folks who might be tuning in for Sports Center that can be seen over on ESPN2. Kenny Main, Trey Wingo, and Chris McHenry. The story of Bill Cartwright, new coach of the Bulls. News on Peter Forsberg. Please come back. And the new Matt Movon speaks to his team at Sports Center on ESPN2 this evening in a couple minutes. Mark. Well, thanks a lot, Chris. First down and 10 for Boston College. Knows the ball on the 15 yard line. I'm Mark Jones along with Chris Gilman and Holly Rowe in Nashville. Green stopped up. Loss of about one on the play. Kevin Field making the tackle. There's a good job of defensive lineman. See Martin get his hand up right there. Gets that big call up. And Ott secures the football. Does a good job of getting it out of there. Now George is giving up the ball in the red zone twice. If you give up the ball in the red zone, you give up opportunities to put points on the board, and you let this PC team hang around and stay in the football game. And last time they got a turnover, they created points off the turnover. That was just the 10th interception of the season by Green. Here's the other Green, William, in space, and off to the races. And it's punched out at the seven-yard line by Jermaine Phillips, who closed the gap on Green. You can't sleep on William Green. <laughs> There's so much to talk about this play. I can't even stand it. That was a tackle trap. Now, you saw Big Colombo come around and get a great job of blocking the middle linebacker Gilbert, prohibiting him from filling the hole. Then you see Phillips take a bad angle first, but not quitting on the football and running down a fastback that has great speed, that has the wherewithal to come with the old punch to punch the ball out of there. Now Green and Boston College is lucky that that didn't go through the end zone because that went through the end zone. That's a touchback going the other way for Georgia. That's a great break for Boston College. A great job of playing football though. A Phillips, great hustle. Great six yard scamper, Chris. First and goal for Boston College. Derek Knight in for Green at tailback. And Knight is tackled at the nine by Chris Clemens. This is the fourth annual Music City Bowl in Nashville, Tennessee at Adelphia Coliseum. Boston College taking the number 19, Georgia. I'm Mark Jones along with Chris Spielman and Holly Rowe down on the sidelines. 7-3 right now. The Bulldogs out of the SEC with the lead, but BC with the ball in the 10-yard line, second down and goal. Mark, this is a great time to go right back to their tight end in the middle of the field. They got Green in there, doesn't have his breath yet. Wouldn't be surprised to see a play action look for the tight end. On the slant, DeWalt incomplete. He had his hands on it, and he was working on number 27, Brandon Williams. Well, again, another drop football. That's a ball that needs to be caught. Now, Brandon Williams gives up the inside. You, you cannot give up the inside on the goal line. You must force the receiver to go to the outside, especially on that slant. See, that ball was thrown and delivered perfectly. Why? Because DeWalt was the only guy that had a chance to catch that football. Boy, you couldn't be upset at St. Pierre if he were a little hacked at his receivers right now. That's at least two drops. One of four passing the ball in third down. Third and goal. That one they hang on to. DeWalt with the touchdown. Give up 
the inside on the slant pattern with no help in the middle of the field. There was no help in the middle of the field. If you're a corner, don't give up the inside or that's what happens to you. The extra point is good by Scortino. Dedrick DeWalt with a touchdown reception, atoning for that earlier drop. And St. Pierre put it right there. We'll be back to Adelphia Coliseum after this. Dedrick DeWalt out of Boston College, native of Chicago, making that touchdown reception moments ago. And I like the call by Dana Bible. He went to the slam one side, DeWalt dropped it. He said, they didn't cover it again. I'll go to the other side with, with DeWalt. DeWalt makes the catch. Edwards and Gibson back deep for Georgia. They've had a lot of success on kickoff returns today. Gibson rocks. He got starched right at the 20 yard line by TJ Stansel. You know why they're having success, Mark, is because they're line driving and kicking. When you line drive and kick, you better be covering like a madman. Even though he catches it four yards in the end zone, his first contact is going to be bam, head up, close the gate in front of the ball. That's a shot. That, that's when the feet come up over the head. When the feet come up over the head and you hear it, that's a good shot. <laughs> but the feet don't come up over the head, that's not great. Like that, boy, that was great. You carried it out good on that thing. <laughs> First down and ten. That's complete. Out to the 31-yard line to Damian Gary. All right, the, look, the linebackers have to start recognizing play action. And how you recognize play action, you not only see it, but you hear it. If there's no uh, 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 that means the linemen are pass setting. If there's uh, 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 that means they're run blocking because they grunt when they run block. Very descriptive, very accurate. I like that. Haynes brought down at the 32 yard line. Folks, tonight at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Capital Bowl Week continues on ESPN with the Culligan Holiday Bowl. Longhorn quarterback, yeah, Major Applewhite getting his first start of the season. Number nine, Texas, taking on number 20, Washington. And their defensive standout, Larry Triplett. Texas against Washington. On ESPN. Second down and nine. open at the 40 and still on his feet Randy McMichael I alluded to him earlier about a lot on his mind that's because he's contemplating taking the next step and playing on Sundays just a junior at 6'4 228 he's a great receiving tight end if he wants to play on Sundays he needs to improve on his blocking a little bit but you like what he does after he catches the football. He turns in their running back. That time breaking tackles again by BC. BC needs to get 11 gold hats running that football. There's the play action. Michael, what a great catch. And stepping out of bounds at the 37 yard line. But look at the hands on big number 86. And he was the one that made the key plays in that victory at Tennessee. Yeah, they're, they're successful with this play right now. It's a bootleg. Now, it's a bootleg. See, the linebackers got to see that guy pull. That guard pulled from the opposite side. This is a great catch. And and if, you, if you're going to roll block somebody, then don't get on the football field. Come up there and wrap your arms and hit him. Don't roll block him. Wrap your arms. Especially a guy. Boy, I mean, he's that big. That big, you got to wrap your arms. You, you, you can't body block them. You're not allowed to body block if you play defense. You have to wrap your arms. That's how you tackle. A, it, it, if you look in the dictionary and tackle, it says wrap your arms. Gotcha. But Michael, meanwhile, first team all SEC this year had an outstanding season as witnessed by those statistics. And as I mentioned, he made several key plays and receptions in that Tennessee victory by Georgia in Knoxville. Second and 13 for the Bulldogs. Picked off. Scott Bradley still on his feet. And Georgia has turned it over three times now in the ballgame. Frank Spaziani's defense is coming up huge here in the first half. That time, the linebackers not only saw, but they heard the play action, the soft set, no grunts by the offensive linemen. That allowed them to get depth. 
when you get depth, you see Scott Bradley reading the quarterback's eyes, and there he is, and catching the ball with his hands. Now, Scott Bradley does a good job of turning into a running back. Now, the thing about David Green and why Scott Bradley got such a great jump, David Green's eyes were fixed on that tight end the whole time, Mark. He didn't look any other place. He looked right at the tight end. Bradley saw that step right in front of the play. Chris, BC has 10 points off the turnover so far in the ballgame. See if they can convert here. First down and 10, 7-14 to play in the first half. DeWalt on the reverse. Edric DeWalt is rocked in the 50-yard line by Chris Clemens. The Dwalt is the guy you want to get in space, Chris. He runs 100 meters, 10.4. That's quick. And he has a little shake there. Should be in Phillips. But they set that play up earlier in the football game. The first time they ran it, they gave the ball to Green. They slowed down the backside of the pursuit. That time they gave it to Dwalt. Clemens gave a nice shot on the sidelines, by the way. Austin College with a 10-7 lead. In possession of the ball at midfield. Green. Green down to the 47-yard line and downstairs to Holly Rowe. Holly? All right, I'm here with some very special guests. Jay Sevigny, the vice president of marketing for Gaylord Hotels. You're taking over the Music City Bowl and becoming the title sponsor next year. What prompted that move? Well, Holly, we're very happy to be to keep this here in Nashville. It's a great source of entertainment, and uh, we're just happy to be part of keeping this here in Nashville and a success. You've got the new logo already rolled out. Let's give a look at it. It looks very nice. Gaylord Hotels. You had the nice banquet there, and it was just a tremendous property where all the teams will stay next year. Yeah, the Gaylord Hotel here in Nashville is beautiful, and it's going to be a, a wonderful home hotel for the game. Thank you very much. Also, we're joined by the mayor of Nashville, and as play continues on the field, Mayor, be patient with me, but... We've had a tremendous time here in Nashville, and I did this game the first year of its existence. It's amazing to see how this bowl has grown. You've got to be very pleased. Well, we're very excited. It's gotten bigger and bigger each year. The partnership with Gaylord obviously promises a bigger year next year, as well as the Big Ten. So uh, we're, we're excited for the town, and we're excited to have the whole world watching on ESPN. Sports market has exploded here for you. The Titans, you've got the Predators, and now the Music City Bowl. Is it everything you hoped for? Oh, absolutely. And I think the good news is that the rest of the country is now seeing that it's all here right now in Nashville. Well, thank you very much. We enjoyed our time. Mark, back to you. All right, thanks a lot, Holly. Yeah, I echo those sentiments. A very vibrant downtown area. Lots to do here in Nashville. First down and 10 after that green reception. After the ball game is Derek Knight, the backup tailback. And Knight is brought down at the 38-yard line. Derek Knight, more than just an understudy in that important Miami game, a close call for Boston College, a game which was very winnable, a game they almost upset the number one team. He ran for 78 yards on 27 carries and did well. Yeah, he's a little bit different type back, smaller guy, a little quicker water buck type guy. Or Green is, as opposed to a big slasher type guy that has speed and power. He's your, he's your water buck. Second down and eight. Two tight end formation. St. Pierre tucks it under. And wisely steps out of bounds after getting the first down at the 25-yard line. Folks, don't forget, if you want your all your news scores and highlights from the day's action, football, basketball, and everything else, ESPN2 is running Sports Center right now. You want to flick over there and then come back and join us? Don't stay away too long. Lots happening here. Right now on ESPN2, it's Sportson. First down and 10 for Boston College. Ball on the 25-yard line. 5-0-1 to play in this first half. DeWalt in motion. Nice play by Bruce Thornton, who closed on the ball while it was in the air. Well, you said it, Mark. He did a great job of closing. Anytime you have your corner and you're out there on an island, you have to have closing speed. Now, that time, St. Pierre, that ball got away from him a little bit because the wall was open for a second there. He had him. He got to throw the ball outside. But there you see Bruce Thornton doing a great job of closing and getting that long arm across, got his body long, and knocked the ball away. St. Pierre, meanwhile. 6 of 13 passing for a total of 62 yards to go along with the touchdown pass. Second down and 10, Green the lone back. Uh, 
Green broke one tackle in the backfield, but was brought down by Josh Mallard at the 26-yard line. Folks, tomorrow at 3.30 Eastern time, Capital Bowl Week rolls on with the Sylvania Alamo Bowl presented by Siemens. Texas Tech quarterback Cliff Kingsbury returning to his hometown of San Antonio to lead the Red Raider offense up against special team standout Khalil Hill and the Iowa Hawkeyes. We saw Hill earlier this season. He is a huge talent. The Eagles 5-9 on third down tonight. They've got to get to the 15 for the first down. Lots of contact and a flag in the end zone. Brandon Williams was covering DeLault. Yeah, I got to take a look at this now because I don't know if their feet just got tangled up or they're fighting for position. But St. Pierre made a strong throw because he still threw a, a kind of a rope, but he threw it off his back foot. That's a strong throw. It's going to go against the Bulldogs and Williams. Now, if he did interfere with him, he didn't have to. He had good tight coverage on him. Again, it's that press coverage, so what are you going to do? You're going to go deep against that press coverage, man. I mean, oh, see, right there. He had that hand on his stomach. When that hand's on his stomach grabbing the shirt, that's a good call by the official. Great vision. Right there, that hand's grabbing that four. You've got to take the hand off the four. You had great coverage. You don't need to do that. Green on the ISO play. Smacks it up in there with Camilla as your lead blocker. Well, his brother comes to the back for the New York Giants, so they, I'm sure they talk about lead blocking with each other. Got to hit it up in there and hit the linebackers. Boston College dominating. 145 yards, 62 passes. Georgia 67. Look at that. Wow, second down and eight. Into the middle of the pack and incomplete, intended for DeWalt. Broken up by Robert Gethers. They try to take advantage of the great pursuit by Georgia defense by pumping the ball into the corner of the end zone, fake throwing it, and hitting a little check down by DeWalt, but Georgia did a good job playing disciplined zone defense, breaking on the football. And once again, Boston College facing a third down situation. The tenth play of the Eagle Drive. They've been able to convert more often than not, or about 50% today. Brian St. Pierre has a lot of input into the game plan, so he has a good feel for this offense. And this is a real quarterback intensive offense, isn't it, Chris? Well, it has to be, Mark. When you do a lot of different formations, you have to be able to line people up and make a lot of calls. Now, him and his buddy, the roommate, the center, Hoping do a lot of communication with each other to make sure that the line and the quarterback are on the same page. That puts the backs receivers on the same page and the other linemen on the same page because the two guys right there are on the same page. All right, here we go in third down and eight. The Waltz put through the top of the screen. And he intentionally threw that one over to Waltz's head. Chris Clemens in on the pressure for Georgia. Yeah, the one thing William Green, if he wants to be an NFL player, you better learn how to block. That time Clemens disregarded him like a rag doll and got pressure. Williams got to step up there and sustain that block a little bit longer to give St. Pierre time to deliver the football. Sandro Scortino in to attempt the field goal from 26 yards out. Made the first one earlier today from 25. And he knocks this one through. The Boston College Eagles lead 13 to 7. In the fourth annual Music City Bowl, it's the Big East against the SEC. This building ripe with emotion on both sides of the field. Plenty at stake as both teams try to end the season with an exclamation point. We'll be back after this. 
ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2001 Music City Bowl is brought to you by Red Zone from Old Spice. Intense protection for intense people. And by Chrysler. Drive equals love. A look at sparkling Broadway in downtown Nashville, Tennessee. Got to hit that barbecue joint after the game. You buying? Yeah, come on. You know I go in my pocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go in my pocket like they got fish hooks in them. <laughs> Boston College after the field goal with a six-point lead. Edwards. Terrence Edwards with a good return out near the 30. And let's go back to Chris Fowler in the studio. All right, Mark, on the Dodge Halftime Report, we'll have highlights, a very unlikely freshman hero for Texas A&M. Take you to the West Coast to report on Miami and Nebraska's matchup in the Rose Bowl. And the results of a poll on Verge Friday, the best Georgia player of all time. Geez, I wonder who that might be. That's coming up at <laughs> halftime. Terry and Rod will join me. I'll take one guess and one only. <laughs> Got to be a linebacker. Oh, uh, come on. <laughs> Haynes on the toss. Veron Haynes has the ability to make yards after contact up to the 37-yard line, about two yards short of the first down. And this is a good opportunity now. Watch David Green operate because they're in a kind of a hurry-up situation with 2.35 left in the first half. It gives you a chance to see a red shirt freshman with composure. And give it to the fullback this time, JT Wall, number 49, and let's go downstairs to Holly. Guys, something to keep your eye on here in the first half. With Boston College winning the time of possession, that means more bodies on the field participating. Georgia seems to be getting a little bit cold. Literally, this is the coldest weather they have played in all season long. Their equipment manager had to order all new tights, long sleeve shirts. The guys are freezing on the bench, and it seems like they're starting to tighten up just a little bit. Interesting point. Down in Athens, Georgia, it's pretty balmy right now. Pass complete to Gibson. Nice move, and still up. And brought down at the 20-yard line is Fred Gibson, a Bulldog first down. Well, again, they've had success with this outcut. You'll see David Green working one-on-one -on -one out here. It's a nice job of breaking this route off. Now he does a shake and bake. He's got a tackle. Parent misses a tackle. Watch this. He goes to the outside, then he hits, plants off that outside leg so he can make the cut inside another plant. He does a good job of finishing off the run. Haynes. Brought down at the 11-yard line. Good tackle that time. Even you would admit that, Chris, by Parent. Yeah, Parent did come up, make a nice hit, and he also got a, a nice block from his fella right there. That's his big fullback at 257 supposed pounds. But he did a good job of ISO Tom Bradley winning that battle, allowing Haynes to get extra yards in the corner. Gibson getting a breather on the sidelines on second down and one. Hayes slipped and fell right near the first down marker at the 10-yard line. But this field position set up by number 82, Gibson of Georgia, with that nice catch and run. There he is. He says that he plans or is still thinking of playing a little bit of basketball after the season on the varsity basketball team. You see the athletic ability, the guy that size can run and catch and move like that, certainly that could translate over onto the basketball floor one way or another. Yeah, initially committed to the University of Florida in Gainesville, but changed his mind. A native of Florida. Meanwhile, a look at the measurement. A little bit short. Inches away. Innovative, innovative and creative Mark Richt. And third down in inches coming up. Let's see what he calls. They got them all packed in there pretty tight. We've got Haynes as a fullback right now. And Haynes gets it, the first man through the hole. You said he was at fullback. That's the position that he played, Chris, before he was moved to tailback. Yeah, they lined him up there because you only have a, a yard to go, so you're going to get him the ball as quick as you can. You're not asking him to make any cuts or use any vision. Just hit it up in there, use your power with the big wall leading you up inside. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, Sports Center in game. Brought to you by Dodge. 
Ainge stopped up near the line of scrimmage by Andy Romanowski. We got a timeout down to the field with 53 seconds to play in the first half. Georgia's turned it over three times already today. We'll see what happens when we come back. And a look at Ryman Auditorium. Downtown, former home of the Grand Ole Opry here in Nashville, Tennessee. There are a ton of great places to visit here in Nashville. Look at William Green being on. He might be going in to get another IV. And he suffered that flu earlier in the week, as Holly Rowe reported. A real pleasant young man with a lot of talent and a bright future. Eighth player of the Georgia Drive coming up. Batted down once again and almost intercepted by Boston College. Number 58, Derek Rossi, tipped it up. Boston College is doing a good job of recognizing, even though they're not getting penetration, what they can do is get their hands up and either get in vision of Brian Green or knock the football down. It's a great job of hands up and knocking the football down. And Gray, the usual starter there, unable to play because of an injury. Derek Rossi with a big call from the end. Third and goal. Gary into the end zone. Incomplete. Terrence Edwards made the catch, but out of bounds. It'll be fourth down. I agree with the call. It's a great call. Now, uh, red flags all over the place. Why? Gary's lined up a tailback, not Haynes. Now, he had him open. But what happened, he waited too long because he's not used to gripping the ball to get his grip to throw the football. The ball floated a little bit in the back of the end zone. Ran out of room. It's a great call, though. Bennett now in to attempt the field goal for the Bulldogs from 24 yards out. He's 17 to 25 on the year. He knocks that one through to cut the Boston College lead to just three points. With 39 seconds to go, he is a picture-perfect 7-7 seven seven from that distance. We'll be back with more right after this. My father was a sports broadcaster, so I spent many Saturdays thinking about what an experience it might be having an opportunity one day to maybe run out a tunnel. I was 19 years old and I had that opportunity. There were 100,000 people in the stands. And as we came through that tunnel, it started to pack up in front of me, and pretty soon it got kind of congested. You couldn't really understand why things weren't just sprinting out onto the field. It's our head coach, Pepper Rogers, doing somersaults right in the middle of the grass. He liked to say that's when he knew his team was ready. What can you learn at Boston College? That academic excellence is worth the challenge. To make wise choices. To seek the truth. To give back to our community to make the most of every opportunity. To act responsibly. To be a leader. To be open to new ideas. A Jesuit education can transform your view of the world. Boston College, ever to excel. 13 to 10, the Eagles with the lead over the Bulldogs, ranked number 19 in the country with 39 seconds to play in the first half. Folks, tonight's telecast of the 2001 Music City Bowl is being seen live around the world by U.S. servicemen and women and their families through the facilities of the American Forces Radio and Television Service. Look at some of our military people on hand today. Folks, when you see one of them in the airport or yeah. in your travels, around the malls, wherever, Give them a hug. Say yeah. thanks. Yeah, those guys are having fun down there, dancing to some parliament. <laughs> the you old got, school parliament. Got, I told you I was versatile. You got I? country music <laughs> down. You got the R and B's. Incredible. Camilla and Burke that back to accept the kickoff. You didn't know I knew that parliament, did you? Oh, you, you got it, man. <laughs> I've become a big Faith Hill fan since coming to Nashville. Trevor White got the kickoff and is brought down immediately to the 21-yard line. Interesting first half, a first half in which Georgia at times seemed to be really rolling, Chris, but the turnovers cost him. Yeah, turnovers kill him. And the good thing for BC, the bad thing for Georgia, when Georgia turned the ball over, their defense didn't respond. BC took the ball down and scored every time they got a turnover. 
First down and 10 for Boston College coming into this game with a record of 7 and 4. Mallard immediately hits Derek Knight. No gain on the play. We were alluded to the turnovers. Three of them so far. There's the first one by Haynes. And the second one right there on the pick. A tip ball drill. Bradley reading Green's eyes, making a break on the football. And all of BC's points have come off of turnovers. All 13 of them. That's the end of the first half. 13 to 10. Let's go downstairs to Holly. Coach O'Brien, your team really came back from an early shot from Georgia. They score on their first possession, but you had some good composure. Well, our kids have been behind before, so it's nothing new for us. But, uh, you know, we have to continue to control the ball and keep their offense off the field. That's our best chance to win. Well, I thought your defense did a nice job of actually scoring off those turnovers and creating turnovers. Yeah, they've uh, done that. Uh, you know, they, they play good pass defense. They want to keep throwing the ball, and we got to keep intercepting it. William Green, I know he went to the locker room a little bit early. Are you concerned about his status? I know he's suffering from the flu. Yeah, he's got a little bit of dehydration, so they're going to probably give him an IV, and he'll be back second half. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you. Mark? All right, thanks a lot, Holly. Boy, there's the picture of a cool and calm coach. UGA trailing right now by three. Let's go to the studio and Chris. There's going to be some more guys sick besides William Green if those guys don't put a shirt on at halftime. <laughs> BC really, as, as O'Brien said, playing good pass defense. Georgia kind of stopping themselves, though, offensively. Yeah, you know, they had the three turnovers. That's really been a problem for them. When you think about Georgia, though, you watch them, their speed is dramatic. They have a real speed advantage. I expect them in the second half to try to exploit that, offensively getting players in space where they can use that speed. Defensively, a little bit more man coverage, a little bit more pressure, especially if Green isn't in there to run the ball, Terry. Yeah, and I talked about how good their vast pass coverage is at BC at the beginning of the game. They are so good, they confuse quarterbacks. Ken Doors hit Miami earlier, four interceptions. Now, David Green, two interceptions, one a foolish interception into coverage at halftime. Mark Rick has got to calm him down and keep that running game going so he doesn't throw the ball in predictable situations. They do try to bait you into making that throw, forcing the ball in there, then they make the pick. That's how BC plays the pass defense. We mentioned all day this is Verge Friday on ESPN.com. One of the polls you have a chance to vote on, the best Boston College player ever. It wasn't even close. Heisman Trophy winner Doug Flutie in a landslide with almost 92% of his 6,200 votes. For Georgia, also a landslide. I tell you what, Frank Sinkwich, here's a guy from your dad's time. He, he was the landslide Heisman guy in 42, if Terry. If my dad could turn on a computer, he would have voted for Frank Sinkwich. <laughs> and you voted for him, didn't you, Chris? No, I yeah. would fool around. I, okay. Herschel, I think, is a great, I think he's one of the top three or four running backs in the history of college football. I just want Frank Sinkwich <laughs> to get some puff. He won the Heisman. Got some love there. Got some love. Well, you can chat with Jim Donnan and Dick Tomey as they prepare to coach their teams tonight in the Holiday Bowl. Donnan will take care of the Husky strategy. Dick Tomey in charge of the Longhorns offense, at least in cyberspace. They're breaking down the Culligan Holiday Bowl right now on ESPN.com. When we come back here at halftime, we have highlights of the GalleryFurniture.com Bowl. The Aggies getting some unlikely heroic help on the defensive side and some big plays on offense just enough against TCU. This is the Dodge Halftime Report. More from Rod Gilmore and Terry Bowden in just a second. Earlier on ESPN, the GalleryFurniture.com Bowl, one of the last major sporting events in the Astrodome in nearby Texas A&M, brought a bunch of fans. TCU, though, trying to reverse a 23-game losing streak against the Aggies. A&M banged up, having to rely on a bunch of young players here. KC Printers trying to pick on the young corner Byron Jones, who started because of an injury to Sean Weston. Jones had the game of his life. Zero career picks coming into this game, but on the care makes the big pick late first quarter. Aggies will try to cash this in after a 62-yard return by Jones, but the Horn Frog defense stops him down inside the five-yard line, sets up a fourth down play, and they stop the handoff. Horn Frogs keeping this game scoreless early second quarter. But on the next play, Jones strikes again and says if you, you can't punch it in from the five, we'll, we'll take it down to the one. Well, they keep trying to go to Adrian Medice, and they keep double covering him, and Jones gets help, and he picks off another one. He would add a third pick for the hat trick coming up. They cash that one in for a sneak. Then A&M on the goal line, bubbles the ball again. Charlie Owens scoops it up. TCU's offense 
shut out on the afternoon, but the defense gets on the board and keeps them in the game at this point. It's just 7-7. Aggies, though, would begin to take control, cashing in mistakes. A 21-7 score when Printers, who just had an awful afternoon, is picked off by Wes Bodovich. That would set up one more a and touchdown. Not an offense used to big plays, but here's Mickey Jones getting loose. No, well, Mickey Jones shows you the AM speed, and this is a team that struggled offensively, as you mentioned, Chris, all of the injuries and the like, but they got just enough today to help the defense pull off this win. An intentional safety and an ice water bath for R.C. Slocum, who snaps a four-game losing streak by taking home the very large and heavy gallerifurniture.com trophy. TCU, five turnovers, 11 penalties, and only 11 first downs as are held to a buck 18. The Aggies defense, by the way, the last six games have picked off only four passes. They get four interceptions in this ball game here. And that's the way you're going to win the game if you're, if you're A&M. You're not going to put up huge offensive stats, but the defense played great. But I don't think they answered any of their real questions that they want to answer. Again, they don't have an offense under 300 yards of offense. And it was a great win for them. They played hard. But they're never going to compete for the Big 12 championship until they find an offense that can run the ball and make points. Now, they need to go back, I think, to their old offense. Run the ball. Run the option. Don't worry about this pass. That's not R.C. Slocum. I just don't well, think it is. I, I, you know, I'm not sure I agree <laughs> with you on that because I think you look at this Team. I think they did do what they needed to do today. They had a young offense and a great defense. They played four freshmen. They had a fifth string tight end playing in this ball game. Another sophomore playing for them. They had one turnover. That's amazing when you have a young team, a young offense, protect the ball that way, and you let your defense win the game. They punched it in when they had to. I think they've got a lot of depth coming back for next year, and I think they'll be in good shape if they can get those players ready to go. Very young team, very tough schedule at Pittsburgh. Virginia Tech visits. Nebraska comes on the schedule, but still, you're right, they're very young. Why do you want to bring them down? They finally <laughs> break <laughs> that bowl <laughs> losing <laughs> streak, <laughs> and you're saying they, they don't have they one They the passing game just enough not hey. to be able to win the conference. They avoided the loss to TC, which would have been bad. This is a big day for the <laughs> Aggies. Don't worry about them. they got time to put in the more offensive stuff for next season. Halftime Georgia is down despite the Gibson touchdown. We'll preview the Holiday Bowl next. on the Ducks and Buffs, Cornhuskers and Hurricanes, the 90-minute college game day live from just outside the Rose Bowl. New Year's morning, an hour earlier than normal at 9.30 Eastern time. It'll be 6.30 on the West Coast. And welcome back to our college game day Dodge halftime report. Part of Capital One Bowl week is the Culligan Holiday Bowl. Coming up to Washington and Texas, if pride, if redemption are strong bowl motivators, this ought to be a great matchup. Woodshed beatings don't get much worse than the one Washington took at Miami. Texas comes off the loss to Colorado. We go to a preview now. Mike Tirico and Lee Corso in San Diego. Mike. Hello, Chris on Verge Friday. We're all having fun here, getting ready as this uh, bowl weekend continues. And usually a peak is the Culligan Holiday Bowl. We actually had a shower here a little bit ago, but the weather should be mostly dry for the game. Of course, the Texas story is the major. Major Applewhite, he gets a start in his final career game in the burnt orange, and he has 44 school records. Almost brought the Longhorns back in the Big 12 championship game. And as Chris alluded to, they'd be a couple hours up the road in Pasadena instead of here in San Diego. Lee Corso, one of the key questions offensively is not major, mm -hmm. but it's Cedric. Cedric Benson, he's just arrived at the stadium, working out, loosening up in the locker room. Looks like, if we had a guess, he's going to give it a go here tonight. What kind of an impact does he have on the offense? Well, Mike, Cedric Benson is the best true freshman running back in the nation. He averaged 4.7 per carry, had 12 touchdowns. But the key stat to me that jumps out at me is that over 50% of his yards were after the first contact. Now, I saw Oklahoma play Texas live and in color. Without Benson, Texas could not run the football. Oklahoma put tremendous pressure on the quarterback. I think it's imperative that Benson and Texas develop a running game in this ballgame. If they don't, I don't care if it's Apple White, Sims, me, or you. They're not going to score much if it's a one-dimensional game. Benson is the key. You mean, you're coming after me here. Absolutely. You mean this. Let's find out what's going on the Washington side. Maybe it's Tamer over there with Doc and Herbie. Hi, guys. Uh, not much, Mike. Thank you very much. And what Rick Newsiesel's Huskies need to do, Herbie, is be able to keep this game close, which means they need to neutralize that potent Longhorn offense 
and put this game squarely on the shoulders of their sophomore quarterback, Cody Pickett. It's amazing to think that. You want to put the, the game on the shoulders of Cody Pickett. You go back to the beginning of this year, Cody Pickett was breaking in. Very athletic, very fast, but because of an injury early in the year, they've had to rely on him throwing the football much more so as this year has gone on. He's battled through injuries, tough competitor. He's led him to three fourth quarter comebacks. And the thing that you love about this guy is he plays at his best when the game is on the line and he's very tough. Not only that, he gets Jeremy Stevens back. Paul Arnold is very healthy and fast on the outside. And of course, the freshman Reggie Williams, they can get the ball thrown vertically, which will help them against the attacking Longhorn defense. And Pickett needs a cut of day he had against Arizona where he set a Husky record with 455 yards passing. That kind of night would help them against a potent Longhorn offense. Well, Chris, it is the Culligan Holiday Bowl on Verge Friday set to come up at 8.30 Eastern. And we, we've enjoyed the, the chats by all four of you gentlemen on ESPN.com this afternoon. Talked about putting the game on Pickett's shoulders. His shoulders are kind of banged up. He's played hurt all year. They want to punish him on the Longhorn defensive side. Yeah, I think they'll try and do that. And I don't know if Pickett's going to be healthy enough to get the ball down the field of Reggie Williams as much as they'd like to. And that's where Willie Hurst comes into play. They're fine running back. He's not a big guy, but he's a strong guy. They can get the ball to him out in the flat, but they can run him inside as well. I think if they do that, they can keep Texas off the field a little bit, and that will help them. But Hurst is really a key player that Washington offense coach I want to talk about that Texas strength that Texas defense this is the strength of their football team they do a great job look at their strengths they are top 10 in every category specifically giving up under 14 points a game why are they so good you know why because Mac Brown one of the best recruiting coordinators in the country he gets great players Carl Reese his defensive coordinator knows how to line them up when I was at Auburn Carl Reese was at LSU one of the toughest guys I ever had to call plays against you know what Steve Spurrier may not agree with me, but Carl Reese, one of the best in the country. He's got great talent. You're right. They have great stats <laughs> as a defense, but they haven't played a lot of very good, very balanced offenses. Lean We're going to see. Washington. Motivation. You're leaning on Washington. A little motivation there. Now, they got to win the special teams war, at least not lose it big. Texas has very good special teams. That's another factor in tonight's Culligan Holiday Bowl. Should be a good matchup. Well, this is Diedrich DeWalt calling in the St. Pierre touchdown pass. Eagles lead by three over Georgia. And welcome back to our Dodge Halftime Report. The BCS Championship game, the culmination to bowl season, of course, is the Rose Bowl, presented by AT&T. Ken Dorsey back in his home state, leading the only unbeaten team in the country. He, of course, was third in the Heisman Trophy voting. Heisman Trophy winner Eric Crouch in Nebraska has to feel like he has a second chance, trying to do what Danny Werfel did, what Charles Woodson did, win a Heisman, then win a national title. But very few guys in history have been able to do that. As the teams build up to the game and get set for the media onslaught, they took time out to visit Disneyland. Here's a report from Los Angeles and Shelly Smith. Uh, it's very disappointing, but that's part of life, you know. Everybody had their trials and tribulations, and it's one of mine. It's not the first one, it showed out the last one. Part of life for Miami fullback Najee Davenport, who broke a bone in his foot last week in practice and is out of the Rose Bowl, but a big problem for the Hurricanes. Davenport was as much the soul of the team as a big-time playmaker. Now the job falls primarily to redshirt freshman Willis McGahee, who rushed for 314 yards as a backup tailback this season. This is a great opportunity for Willis, and what happens, uh, you know, when you lose someone like that, now it opens the door for somebody else to have that opportunity. And I think a lot of the success we're going to have or not have depends a lot on that position and how he accepts, uh, he accepts the challenge. It's a real good opportunity because you know I've been out for like the last four games, so it'll be a good experience to go out there and show the, show the coaches and everybody else what I can do. This is a leader out there on the field, you know, some guy that can step up. And, but uh, Willis McGahee and the other backs are going to have to step up and do the job, and I, I feel they're, they're very capable of doing that. The other backs expected to see time at fullback are freshman Kyle Cobia and sophomore Jarrett Payton. They are going to run their system, and uh, the system is going to be run regardless of, 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 of who lines up. The thing that, um, uh, that makes us feel that, um, that there's probably not going to be a, a major drop-off, you know, and if it is, it's probably going to be more from the line of experience than, than, than any, anything else, is the way their coaches have remarked um, about the players. Davenport has taken on the role as advisor. He uh, just told me to go out and play hard. He knows I know the game plan. He said just when you go out there, do what, uh, how you watch me on, on practice field, how I do, and that's uh, just playing hard all the time. So I'm just going to go out and try to mind myself after him. What do you expect? How to take on blocks? Just, just all the little things. Little yeah, things. little things. The coaches can't tell you what, what happened, what goes on on the field. He had a tendency to get upset. And like everything go down here, so I, I keep his head in one play at a time, you know, forget about the last play. 
As for Nebraska, the Cornhuskers had the day off. A lot of players saying they were planning on hitting the beach and then the Lakers game on Friday night. But they're scheduled to be back in pads for a full two-hour practice on Saturday, as are the Hurricanes. In Los Angeles, I'm Shelly Smith, ESPN. You get the hard work out of the way in the morning, you can enjoy your afternoon. That report, of course, making reference to Najee Davenport of Miami. Broken foot surgery out of the game. Ethnic Sands, by the way, a backup wide receiver for Miami. Not as important as Davenport is to the offense. He's also out of the game. He's been suspended. We'll come back at halftime. Boston College, the three-point lead over 19th-ranked Georgia down in Nashville. We're back on the Dodge Halftime Report with a reminder that the triple header tomorrow begins at noon Eastern time. Hey, how about Toledo? Chester Taylor. Got to watch him. Probably the best underrated running back in college football. I knew you'd talk about him. Tell you like you like that K-State-Syracuse matchup. I really do. Great offense again. K-State can run that ball in great offense, but that's an excellent defense at Syracuse. They're the one team that can shut it down. Now we'll see whose defense will take control in the second half of the Music City Bowl. BC making the big plays, frustrating David Green and the Eagles clinging to the three-point lead. The second half when you come back. Welcome back, everyone, to the Cradle of Country Music, Nashville, Tennessee, for the fourth annual Music City Bowl. It's 13-10 at halftime. Boston College with the lead over 19 in Georgia. I'm Mark Jones, along with Chris Spielman, the country music aficionado. And uh, Chris... Reminds me of the Johnny Cash song, I Walk the Line, William Green's performance in the first half. Yeah, William, I tell you, it shows explosive power, but the story of the first half, Mark, has been turnovers. Georgia must protect the football. Boston College did a good job of capitalizing on those turnovers. Our Holly Rowe had a chance to speak with Mark Rick just moments ago. Coach Rick, you're down by three points, but three turnovers. I know you can't be happy about that. No, that's, that's the biggest part of the game right now. We're not holding on the ball. Uh, you know, Green's trying to throw a little flatter than he should. And we've dropped a couple key passes there, too, offensively. We moved the ball well, but it's uh, same old business in the red zone. You know, we're not taking advantage of our situation. Defense is playing pretty good, but, uh, you know, we let him break free for one big one. Flip uh, Phillips makes a beautiful play, but uh, it, we didn't capitalize on it. We still, they still got seven out of it, so we got our work cut out for us. Thank you very much. Take a look at some of the defining numbers from the first half. Of course, the turnovers, the major story. Boston College controlling the time of possession, courtesy of the success of their running game. Green with 126 yards on the ground. Yeah, you look at the obvious is the turnovers, Mark. But another thing, Georgia's only given up 108 yards per game rushing. In the first half, BC alone had 145, with William Green going for 126 himself. Remember, folks, that Green left the bench near the end before the end of the first half. He is suffering from the flu, is what our Holly Rowe reported earlier in the game. Mark, one thing to watch for. Now, Boston College is getting the football to start this second half. Now, during the season, the third quarter, they've had 95 points, the highest output of any quarter they've had all year. J.P. Camilla. Brought down at the 15-yard line. The special teams for the Bulldogs doing well on special teams that time. Well, the brother of Greg Camello with the New York Giants, Brian St. Pierre at the helm of the offense. For good bloodlines, too, St. Pierre. His dad is a Harvard football grad who played at the school. Brian coming in with high expectations for the season. Expectations that, for the most part, have been met. First down and 10 for Boston College. Green on the draw. Lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Phillips wrapped him up. Yeah, it's Jermaine Phillips. Now, what you do when you bring up an eight-man front, which is a popular term in football nowadays, the safety man comes up and lines up as a linebacker. So that means you have an extra man. They only have seven to block eight. Can't be done if the guys play disciplined defense. That time, Jermaine Phillips held his ground and made a good open field tackle on a talented back. Second down and 10. Two tight end, two wide out formation. It's green again. Gain of one on the play. Bruce Thornton making the tackle for the Bulldogs. It'll be third down and long as we take a look at our ESPN game track. 
The defense for the Eagles, staunch and stout with two picks and a fumble recovery so far. And you see William Green has advertised 126 yards rushing in that first half. He showed some power and speed. And Veron Haynes not to be outdone as 89 himself. Third down and nine for Boston College. Jamal Burke split to the bottom of your screen. St. Pierre got hit hard near the 25-yard line by Shedrick Wynn. And number 57, Jonathan Sullivan. He's close to the first down, and he almost lost the ball. But that's a great job of hustling by Cedric Wynn from his defensive line position. He takes a good shot. The ball almost does come out of there, and Wynn coming down from his defensive end position, hustling to get a whack on him. St. Pierre's got to take it to the outside and go for the chains. This is the way that BC started the game, too. It was three and punt. That's how they start the third period. Dr. Kilgo gets off a high punt. It's brought down at the 40. And a flag down right there. You know, Mark, I understand that rule, mm -hmm. but I don't like that rule because it puts the defender the guy covering at such a disadvantage because he's running full speed trying to defeat a blocker. Interference with the opportunity to make catch kick on the defense. That's a five yard penalty. First down. Where he doesn't know where the ball's in the air. He must give the punt returner two yards and that wasn't even close to being two yards of space. We'll be right back. Back at the Music City Bowl, the Eagles lead by three. William Green, the running back for Boston College, as we said, suffering from the flu. He has actually been throwing up on the sideline. He's horribly dehydrated. They say he will continue to play, though. He's receiving fluids as soon as they can get them. Boy, tough going for William Green. Tough to play that position under the best of circumstances, but when you're throwing up on the sidelines, you can only imagine what he's going through. Number 21 is on the run that time. Trevor White came from his corner position on a corner blitz and nailed the fullback, cut his legs, and was able to make the play, not giving one for one, taking two for one. Second down and 11 for the Bulldogs. Incomplete, intended, number 18, Gary. It'll be third down and long. Sean Guthrie forced that pass. Why? He didn't chase the play action. He held his responsibility, keeping contained on the backside of the run fake forcing Green to throw that ball a little bit earlier than he wanted to. It was interesting to see Georgia enjoy most of their success offensively in the first half when they went to the quick tempo offense. It's a no huddle type offense. Third down and 11. We'll see it again. Blitz coming. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down. No flag on the play. Well, that's where the receivers, that one's on the receivers. You got all that time in man-to-man -man coverage. Which way they, they were in because they brought the safety blitz. Here's the safety coming. Parents coming inside. Now, Gibson has to get open. Now, he quit on his route. He stopped running. He's got to run. White didn't quit. He kept running. The receivers got to keep running. As a result, Georgia will punt. Jonathan Kilgo. Now, BC has their punt safe in there. Edric DeWalt. This is his first punt of the ball game. Killed him. Low snap. You know what? It hasn't been a very good day for the wide receivers on both sides of the field. Both of them suffering from uh, dropsy. There's one. Edwards dropping one. And Burke had one there on the skinny post. DeWalt could have had a touchdown. Came back and caught one later, though. Atoning for that miss. Looks like we got to get their hands out in front of their body and use their hands. Don't use your body. Use your hands to catch your football. First down and 10 for the Eagles. He got through the line of scrimmage in the initial contact. I'll never know. Out to the 26-yard line is William Green. Take a 
look at the numbers from the respective quarterbacks, 6 of 15 and 12 of 22. You factor in some of those drops, and it would have had some better numbers up there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, you have a chance to catch the ball, you got to catch it. Now, one guy that caught the ball for Georgia and wasn't in that series was number 12, Mitchell. He came in one series. Green went to him four consecutive times. Mitchell catches the ball four consecutive times. We have a man down in the field for Boston College. Looks like Parento. He's one of the key offensive linemen, the starting right guard. That's a second, yeah, that's the second time he's been down. Meanwhile, William Green, we were talking about him having the flu moments ago. He is facing some very tough conditions. Not tough, but... Well, some big decisions to make nonetheless. After this bowl game, he will travel to Miami and meet with his grandma and his uncle, along with head coach O'Brien, and discuss his future. Chris, you alluded to the fact earlier in the broadcast that you've spoken with some NFL people who say he is a high pick. Well, NFL people that are on the advisory board that helps juniors determine where they would go. And William Green, to a lot of people, are number one draft pick. Again, rarely does the first man bring him down. If they do bring him down, they bring him down with an arm tackle. When he runs with power, he delivers a blow. He has breakaway speed. You see there, he split the two defensive backs. He's got to be able to finish that run. He's just a junior at 6'1", 215. And he has expanded his uh, pass route running this year and his catching skills to really become the complete package. Now, last year at this time, Green did not play in the Aloha Bowl because of a violation of an unspecified team rule. He was also suspended this year for one game for a violation of a team rule. But when you meet William Green, you find out personally that he is a very engaging young man, a great kid, a doting father of a two-year-old girl. And you know what? He actually stayed up early Christmas morning, late into the night, to make sure that his daughter's presents were wrapped and ready for her in the morning. Well, that you know that that's part of being a father and taking responsibility. And I circled his arms there too because he has <laughs> he has NFL pipes, Mark. Yeah, he sure does. The one thing, yeah, you know, the only weakness that I've witnessed tonight, and, and obviously is I haven't had a chance to sit down and study him, but when I saw him try to pick up a blitz, he had a little trouble blocking it, and that's something that pros, especially running back coaches demand of running backs that you have to be able to block. Th uh, for example, the guy Thurman Thomas was a great pass blocker. Right. Never got credit for it, but was a great pass blocker. Second down and two for Boston College. Green stops on a dime. Didn't leave Georgia any change. William Green. And a first down at the 40-yard line and a flag down on the field as well. He changed directions in a hurry. Again, that's his zone play where he has the ability to hit the ball anywhere on the line of scrimmage where he sees fit. Coming back. There you saw a demonstration of the skills of Reed. Let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Craig, the thing I've been impressed with with William Green is his demeanor on the sideline. Obviously, he doesn't feel well tonight. Throwing up, he's very weak, but he has been a leader. He's standing up, yelling for his teammates. He's up off the bench, looking at what's going on on the field. He has got a real passion for the game, and even though he doesn't feel well, he's been a real leader, inspiration here on the sideline. All right, Holly, you know, Chris, it's great when your best player is a very humble guy, too, isn't it? Well, absolutely, because it sets the tone for younger players, and this is how the way to get it done. These seniors want to win this football game to build on next year for all the guys coming back. Second down and seven for Boston College. Green stopped up at the line of scrimmage by Charles Grant. Grant, one of the better players on that defensive front. And he, too, is considering his draft prospects for next year, just a junior. We're here in Nashville, Tennessee, at Adelphia Coliseum for the Music City Bowl. It's the SEC against the Big East Conference, Georgia against Boston College. I'm Mark Jones, along with Chris Spielman and Holly Rowe down on the sidelines on a cool, clear, and crisp night. Third down and seven. Boston College 5 of 11 on third downs tonight.
Incomplete. And it's fourth down, no punt. Intended for Burke. And a great job by Bruce Thornton. Again, I'm going to say this again because it's important. It's a good job by Burke, too, recognizing press coverage and man-to-man. -man. He has to... If the corner's playing off, he's going to run a slant. If the corner's playing press coverage on top of him, he's going to run a takeoff. Thornton has a lot of confidence because he's up there playing press coverage, daring him to throw deep, and he's so far he's answered, answered the challenge. McMillan to punt. Ooh, and they came after him that time, and he responds with a moonshot. Gary tackled immediately at the 31-yard line. Good special teams by the Eagles and a great punt by McMyler of 48 yards. And you know what? Here in Nashville, the place to be, Market Street. All you can want and then some. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2001 Music City Bowl is brought to you by Dodge. Get somewhere. Grab life by the horns. Dodge. And by Capital One. Proud sponsor of the Capital One Florida Citrus Bowl on January 1st. Good special teams work moments ago by Boston College, Chris. Yeah, you want to talk about form tackling. Leading with your face. One step and wrap, two steps and squeeze, and drive him to the ground. If we were ever to do a tackle demo, that's how you would do it. I have a feeling uh, we might see one. Green complete for Gibson. And a first down at the 46-yard line of Boston College. Ralph Parent made the tackle. And uh, George has been successful throwing the ball to the outside. Now, right here, you got to jam him up and slow his time. You can't just touch him. you got to jam him, put your hands on him. And Parent got to realize that he's not going to make the play going behind him. He's got to put his helmet through the back and hopefully knock the ball out. A five-yard pickup and a blitz by the Eagles. And they get to Green back at the 48-yard line. Vinny Churchu, a 5'11 junior linebacker. The top tackler on that defense for BC. Okay, zone blitz, Mark. This is what I call the Sam and Mike blast. That's a Sam. That's a Mike. There's the blast. Now, why is it a zone blitz? Nobody picked up Churchu. Then you saw Guthrie drop off into the flat to take away the tight end on the bootleg route. And got down at the 48-yard line by Parrott once again. Third down and long for Georgia, who has now gone to their hurry-up offense. Three receiver formation. Gibson split to the bottom of your screen. Frank Spaziani's defense has done well so far today. Third and 15. Another blitz coming by BC. Gibson complete. And down at the 33-yard line, another Georgia first down. Peter Sean. Making the tackle on the play and covering. You know, that time they came with a zone blitz again. Now, he has no chance. Sheen has no chance because he's playing deep third. Who has to get under that? He's not even in the pitcher. It's Guthrie. He's got to work underneath that. It's third and 15. Don't fake like you're rushing. Turn and run to the out. Haynes brought down by Rossi. Ron Haynes rushed for 521 yards and five touchdowns in the last three games of the season for Georgia. A hard-nosed, determined runner. And we have a player down and back in for him, actually, now. It's Lisa Smith, the guy who he initially replaced as a result of a Smith injury. Second down and eight. It's Smith. And Smith is tackled at the... 26 yard line. Well, tonight at 8.30 Eastern Time, Capital One Bowl, we continuing on ESPN. The Culligan Holiday Bowl. Major Applewhite finally getting his first start of the season, replacing Sims at quarterback. It's number nine, Texas, against number 20, Washington. And their defensive standout, Larry Triplett. And during the game, folks, log on to ESPN.com and play Verge Friday. The coaches, Jim Donnan and Dick Tony. Third and four. 
Smith with the first down to the 18-yard line for Georgia. Clark, they're doing a good job knowing it's third and four. What they're doing is they're clearing everybody out, knowing it's his own defense with the play action. Now, watch the linebackers get out, and you'll see Veron Smith come out on the shotgun. See these linebackers getting out of there. He's just checking down, giving him the ball out there in the in the check down there, you're letting him run for the first down. Why? Because the linebackers are getting too much depth now. Nobody's covering the check down. It was a repeat of the play. Again, they hit it back out of the backfield. It's the fullback, JT Wall, this time, who's tackled by Churchill. And once again, like what happened in the first half, when Georgia goes to its hurry-up offense, they seem to move the wall, ball pretty well. And they are, and, and what they do is they're controlling the tempo of the ball game. And when they do a lot of substitution, they'll huddle. When they don't want to substitute, obviously they get up to the line. The ball survey the defense, call it play and run it. Ron Haynes back in the ball game at tailback. Being the fullback wall out of the eye. Haynes moving that pile down to the seven-yard line that time. And JT Wall again, 257 pounds. Leading away, nice job of lead blocking. Now what's happening here is, is Boston College, see the guys out there, the guys out there got their hands on their hips. Big JT's got his hands on his hips, that's okay because he's lead blocking. When a defense has their hands on the hips, that means they're tired and they're starting to push, get a good push on that Boston College front seven. So get your hands off your hips, guys, you're tired. This is the 10th uh, play of the Georgia drive coming up and keep in mind, Earlier in the game, they stalled down here in the red zone the virtue of a couple of interceptions and a fumble. And they need to come away with some points here. Third and inches. The Bulldogs looking for their fourth consecutive bowl victory. And Mark Ritt, his first as a head coach here at Georgia. Not a bad time to go to the tight end. A little play action pass and hit your tight end because third and inches you're successful running the ball you always have fourth down if you want to go to it knowing that you've been successful running the football this series look for Ron Haynes right off following JT Wall there he is first down for Mark Ricks Georgia Bulldogs Haynes getting the job done Tonight, two for four in the red zone. In the season, 31 of 44. And the two they didn't get, though, again, like you pointed out, Mark, there were turnovers that cost the points. Haynes running hard down to the two-yard line and a flag down on the play. Ralph Parent making the stop on Haynes. It'll be first down and goal to go for Georgia. Yeah, you see Veron Haynes saying why, why he gets a face mask. Look at him. He's going to lower his shoulder. He runs low to the ground. Great leverage. The parent comes in. You've got to get him down. He's got to bulldog him down. No pun intended, but he's got to grab that face mask to get him down. Haynes, Smith, and Wall in a full house backfield. Touchdown, Georgia. Veron Haynes. For the touchdown. That was a, an out tough him drive. They just out tough him. They beat him up up front. They shoved it down their throat. Now Boston College has to go to the sidelines and regroup here. The Georgia Bulldogs seize the tempo with their hurry up offense and march it down the field very methodically. And they have retaken the league. Boston College trailed early. Georgia jumped out to a 7-0 lead after just two plays. Led 7-0, but BC led at halftime. And that's the first snap. score. Full start of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty. Repeat the try. So that's the first score of the second half. 
David Green, the SEC's freshman of the year. Doing a nice job there, especially in those third down situations. Clearing everybody out, knowing where his check down back Smith was going to be. Went to it twice, hitting twice. Both times they picked up the first down. And move this one back a little bit. Georgia looking for its fourth consecutive victory to close out the season. So a 25 yard extra point now off the toe of Corba. And Bennett knocks it through. Yeah, oh, he missed it. Uh -huh. My bad, he missed it. Mark, I'm thinking to myself, Marshall, 75, the guy that jumps off sides, just took it from a field goal to a touchdown. Or from a touchdown to a field goal. Mental errors that could come back to haunt him. One more look at the touchdown. He made it over by that much. Ron Haynes. Just enough. Good enough for David Green. We'll be right back. Ken Mellons at the Wild Horse Saloon here in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm going to grab myself a couple of CDs, country music, before I leave this time. It grows on you down here, it does. Heartfelt songs, heartfelt emotions down on the field between Boston College and Georgia. 16 to 13 after that missed extra point. That was his first missed extra point of the season. It's interesting how Georgia lines up for their kickoff. The reason they do that is so the Boston College guys can't get a count on who to block. But it doesn't help if you kick it out of bounds. <laughs> Kick out of bounds on the kicking team. The ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. Take one more look at the tough sledding inside and the work of Haynes. It's a nice job with BC guys. Their linemen getting penetration and getting down. And I, right there, he's not a, right there. He got the ball across. I don't think his knees are down. Great job of recognizing where he is on the field, getting that ball over the plane. Haynes with his sixth rushing touchdown in the last four games. On that last drive, Green was a perfect five of five. Here's the other Green, William. Got to the edge and a good tackle at the 40-yard line by number 22. Ryan, let's go down to Holly. Guys, we're talking about the leadership of Ron Haynes, and it continues to show. Instead of celebrating down on the sidelines after that last touchdown, he's over here playing catch with David Green. They're up by just three, and they're remaining completely focused here on the bench. He's been such a leader for this Georgia team that despite just playing in several games towards the end of the season and averaging just 69 yards a game rushing, they voted him the overall permanent team captain. You better believe he has been their Martin Skull for Georgia this season. Well, he carries a lot of juice and a lot of weight on that team. Second down and five. Little option. First time we've seen that from Boston College today. St. Pierre keeps it out to the 45-yard line, close to the first down. Brought down by Boss Bailey. Pierre, meanwhile, has missed on his last four pass attempts. I tell you, I like that call to get him back involved in the game and get some confidence in him by running the football. And he does a good job of reading not to pitch that ball. Why you don't run, you don't want to lose that guy running the football. He's not a runner. He's not going to make his living running the football. But it's a nice little change up to get him back involved and get him going. Six to 16. Running ball for only 28 yards. First down and 10, Boston College. Flags down and Green stopped up right at midfield on Georgia's side of the 50-yard line by Curry. Jonathan Sullivan, number 57 for Georgia, may have jumped offside a little bit early. Yeah, you got an aggressive defense. You want to hard count them. That's what happens. Hard count them, you get a freebie. Well, folks, tomorrow night at 7.30 Eastern Time, a special edition of Monday Night Countdown as we bring you analysis and news previewing the night's matchup. Then join Al, Dennis, and Dan for a special Monday Night Holiday Bash. Ray Lewis and the Ravens head to Tampa to take on Keyshawn Johnson and the Bucks. Buck ball playing for their playoff life. 
you know, every year they kind of picked up their play after Lee Flowers called them a bunch of quote unquote paper champions. Called them out. Called them out. First down and five for Boston College. Tackle for loss back at the 45 by Sullivan. So Sullivan atones for that penalty just moments ago, jumping offside. Yeah, Boston College has done a good job with the tackle trap by getting Colombo to pull around. Right here's Colombo, he's pulling around. But what knocks the tackle trap off is Sullivan getting his penetration and not only taking up two blockers, but making a play that doesn't allow Colombo to get up inside the hole to leave Green into the second level, which is the linebacker area. Yeah, just a sophomore playing with a lot of savvy. Yeah, Georgia's passing game really starting to make a difference here. St. Pierre was rushed after the poor snap, and it's incomplete. It'll be third down and long. That's a, looking at his hand. Bad snap, you look at your hand. That's his roommate, Copen. We'll talk about that tonight. <laughs> Open in St. Pierre roommates on campus. He's a grinder. I, I love those offensive linemen. When I was playing, I always roomed with them. I saw Copen in the elevator. A bunch of guys said, hey, Cope, looks like you combed your hair today. He looked at them and said, no way, I'd never do that. He took it personal. <laughs> what are you talking about? Third down and 10 for Boston College. St. Pierre escapes. And he got the first down. A picture determination, Brian St. Pierre. A 12-yard pickup. What a run, Chris. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, his buddy does a great job of blocking for him because he's he said, I'm sorry about the bad snap. The least I can do, this is a great job, boy. The least I can do right here is come get a block for you and lead you to the first down. That's a great job of coping. Not giving up on the play in St. Pierre, using his athletic ability and his feet to get the first down. First down and 10 for Boston College with 248 to play in the first quarter. Green stopped up behind the line of scrimmage. Because Georgia seems to be getting some initial penetration up front, just blowing up that play early. Well, yeah, that's what they're doing, Mark. They're teeing off now what Boston College has to do. Start throwing the ball. You see, oh, ooh, ooh. Got to get that, that sweat wiped off. Let's drop the football. That's That's big. Good job of concentrating keeping it. But, Mark, they are getting penetration, and, and they're coming after Green. So what you have to do is keep them honest, and you got to start throwing some quick timing moves. Not throw the ball downfield. You don't have to do that to be effective. Just get the ball in the hands of somebody else and let them do something. Three receiver formation for the Eagles. It's incomplete, intended for DeWalt. St. Pierre once again buying himself a little bit of time, but now he has missed his last five pass attempts. Gorgeous 252 yards a game, ninth in the SEC in pass defense, but they worked on it. They had a little extra practice time. Down to 62 yards tonight. That time Cedric Wynn, another great job of hustling not giving up on the play and getting a shot on St. Pierre, which forced a low throw because Diedrich DeWalt did what the receiver was supposed to do when a quarterback's in trouble, come back for the football. Third down and 15. They've converted almost 50% tonight on third down. Going up top, incomplete. It'll be fourth down and ten. Grant Adams, the intended receiver. Took a shot downfield. It's a good play. Slows everybody up by faking the ball to Green. And Bryant. That's away. Looking lean, looking lean. And a boy. Now go up and catch the ball. It's a good job of covering now. They'll make, make the play. Looking lean. They don't need it up here. Myler into punt. Fourth down and 15. And Boston College will call a timeout. No, you don't call a timeout with the ball on the 48-yard line. You go ahead and take the five and still kick it down and pin him back. 
That's a wasted timeout by Boston College right there. With just two remaining now. 1.45 to play in the third period. Boston College and Tom O'Brien have had to deal with some heartbreak this year as we flash back to their game against number one Miami, driving for the winning touchdown and score. Brian St. Pierre's pass picked off right there. And then eventually Ed Reed, number 20, will snatch the ball out of his teammates' hands and go the distance on the play. Boston College finally losing by a score of 18 to 7. But when you look at their success in that game, and you look at their schedule and their losses this year, all four of their losses against bowl teams. And a win against Pittsburgh, who was also a bowl team. But they were able to almost outscheme Miami and become successful, Chris. And they did a great job against them. And they, you know, they were gunning for that game all year. It was, it was up at Boston College, had a chance to win beat the number one team in the country and turn all the college football world on its head. But Miami, you got to be a little bit lucky once in a while, even though you're a great team. They made a big play at the end to win. Fourth and 15. Miles punt. They're going to put this one inside the 10-yard line at the 9. A 40-yard punt, nothing on the return. As the Georgia Bulldogs out of the SEC looking to improve to 9-3 and three on the season. Lead by a field goal with 133 to play in the third. Mark, you saw time Coach O'Brien come out there and was, was yelling at somebody because they did take a timeout. And that could come back to haunt them with only two timeouts. You waste the timeout. First and ten. Intended for Gibson, incomplete, out of bounds. Gibson, one of Green's favorite targets today. And we talked about his basketball ability. He's actually, he's good friends with Kwame Brown out of Florida. Brown was the first player ever to be picked number one in the draft coming straight out of high school. And they played AAU basketball today. Second down and 10. This is Haynes. Tripped up, falling forward to the 12-yard line. A third down and about eight to go. Let's go to Holly. Guy talking about Fred Gibson, the right receiver for Georgia. He only played two years of high school football. He was actually known as a basketball star, as you mentioned. When he got to Georgia, he really didn't learn the offense very quickly and played very sparingly in their first three games. Once Coach Rick thought he knew a little bit more about the offense, he put him in, and he ended up as the team's leading receiver in yards over the season. They said that his basic philosophy is put the ball up, I'll jump up and get it, much like a basketball pass. Yeah, he's a big target, Holly. This one in the air. Caught, but incomplete out of bounds intended for Terrence Edwards. Wallace does a great job of squeezing him out of bounds. You see right there, he's working him out of bounds. That's a great catch. Tough to get, get his feet in, but Wallace does a good job of using his body to force the receiver out of bounds. That's tall on tall. 6-4 Walls against 6-2 Edwards. That was a jump ball type situation, although it wasn't Gibson this time involved. And rarely do you see a 6-4 corner anymore. I remember the last real big, huge corner was Mel Blunt. Pittsburgh Steelers. Absolutely. You see a lot of big, tall, wide receivers in the NFL now. Thus, you'll see a lot of big, tall corners pretty soon. It's all about trends. Jonathan Kilgo standing in the shadows of his own goalposts. Let's it bounce to the 45-yard line. Good starting field position on this drive for Boston College with 34 seconds to go in the third period. 42-yard punt. Uh, Georgia, as I mentioned moments ago, has won four consecutive bowl games. And I'm sure they'd like to see a BCS bowl in their future one day. But that's a, you know, that's a good sign to see teams, how they prepare. Georgia's been successful. A lot of, you know, a lot of administrators, everybody paying attention to bowl game records. Right. Mark Richt beginning to build something special in Georgia. First down and 10. Flag down. Green tackled. The 48-yard line. I tell you, it takes a village to bring this guy yeah. down sometimes. <laughs> Flag down on the far side of the field at the 46. Might have, a, might have a holding call on the backside, cutting off the pursuit. 
Wow. That's against Georgia. You know, Mark Rick said that his biggest challenge when he initially arrived in Athens, Georgia, was getting the players to buy into what they were doing. Basically, a philosophy of hard work and taking no shortcuts and building a lot of unity through sacrifice. And look at his record as an assistant, former offensive coordinator at ECU and at Florida State, subsequently with Bobby Bowden. He said the thing that he learned most from Bobby was just be yourself, be fair, and enjoy the players. And he's done that so far. First down and five, St. Pierre on the wagon. Overthrowing his wide open tight end, Ryan. And that'll be the last play of the third quarter in the Music City Bowl. Mark Rick looking for his fourth consecutive win and his first bowl win as a head coach. Oh, you gotta love the line dancing at the Wild Horse Saloon here in Nashville, Tennessee. That's uh, Billy Ray Cyrus, right? Oh. Aiky 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 Breaking Heart. Aiky Breaking Heart. You know, uh, St. Pierre's missed his last eight passes, Mark. For Boston College to get to this football game, to at least tie it up, he's got to start converting, especially when the guys are wide open. And that last pass attempt, missing his tight end. Second and five. Green with a nice spin. On the first down at the 44-yard line. The offense moving the ball, the defense for BC. One of the main storylines on our ESPN game track. Two interceptions and a fumble recovery in the game so far, Chris. Yeah, Green had 100, 129 yards rushing. Only three in that third quarter, though. Finally, Veron Haynes says, hey, there's another running back in this game. He's number 35. I got 105 rushing. Scored the go-ahead touchdown just a few moments ago. First down and 10 for the Eagles. Green tripped in the backfield but kept his balance falling forward to the 41 but there's a flag on the play. Kevin Veal number 96 moving a little early. Mark an underrated skill is the hard count. Phil Sims is the best at it. Explain. And when you have a, a, a team or a defensive line that can penetrate like Georgia's defensive line can penetrate you have to find some way to slow them down. A lot of times those guys like to jump the count. And if you go on one a lot, they're going to jump the count on the first hut. But Green is giving them a hard first hut, making them think that the ball is going to be snapped, getting them to jump because they're so aggressive. First down and five for St. Pierre in the BC offense. Just underway here in the fourth period. Green again, brought down by Sullivan. Gain of about two yards on the play. Boston College has been asked so many questions, but the one that raises their ire so much and the one that upsets the head coach so much is the one indicated by that streak. 21 consecutive losses against ranked opponents. Yeah, I can understand why that would upset you, but I, and look, they're a good football team with a good program, a great head coach, but what they have to do to take that next step to one day get to the top of the college football world, they got to start beating ranked teams. And I can, for me, it's unacceptable that you lose 21 straight to ranked football teams. And they have to have the confidence to do it, where it's no longer good enough for them just to compete with those teams. St. Pierre is going to talk it over with his head coach. We're going to take a break and come right back to Nashville after this. Boston College's offense looking at second down and two. Just underway here in the fourth quarter, I'm Mark Jones, along with Chris Spielman and Holly Rowe at the Music City Bowl in Nashville, Tennessee. Boston College has yet to score in the second half. And St. Pierre has missed on his last eight pass attempts. Good play action down. Green stopped up about a yard and a half short of the first down. Let's go to Holly Rowe. 
before the offensive line took the field for this series, one of the coaches for Boston College, Bob Magazine, told them, if you want to be ranked, you've got to go out there and take it. We've been talking about their streak of not winning against ranked teams. And he told them the difference between being ranked and not ranked is about from this far to this far. He told them that they've got to go out there and take it. He said they haven't been so far in this game. All right, Holly, we'll see what they get done up front on that offensive line on third down and one. Backs out of the eye with Camilla and Green. It's Green. Going to be close to the first down. His forward progress took him beyond the 35-yard line, but just how far? That's the question. You see a great job of Tony Gilbert, the middle linebacker, filling the hole, creating a pile. It's a big measurement right here for Boston College. Again, they're going to come with the trap, see the guard pull around right there, lead up in the hole. They knock the guard back. And Gilbert filling the hole. And I'll tell you what, Jermaine Phillips, the safety, has no business to knock a guard back. And that's what happened. You would think that would be a mismatch. And Green is that much short of the first down. Decision time for Boston College with 12.30 to play in the fourth quarter. And I think you go for it and... and uh, even a hard count. The hard count's worked twice so far. Colombo's down there. The big tackle saying, boys, well, it's time to put up or shut up. They're 7 to 12 on fourth down this year. And this is easily the defining point of the game so far for Boston College. He made it. Bruce Thornton got there first. Now they're not even going to measure. It's a great tackle by a corner on a great running back, Bruce Thornton. Lining up on the line of scrimmage right here. Bruce Thornton's on the line of scrimmage, and it's one on one. Now, the guy who misses the block is Camilla. Camilla's got to lead outside because everybody's blocking down, hoping the linebackers get on the wash. Camilla's got to lead outside on Thornton to give himself a chance. He doesn't have a chance. Thornton makes a great one-on-one -on -one play. And the trickery blows up in their face this time. A sack back to the 25 by Derek Rossi is quarterback David Green. Okay. Why you don't do that because you've been successful with play action all night. You don't need to do that You need to stick with what you did in the third quarter which dominated the football game Either run the ball or throw the out cuts or throw the check down to the back trickery is not needed right now Second down in 19 Mark Rick likened DC to South Carolina and Auburn in terms of the talent level on the team and the way they play. Oh, and that was almost an interception by Scott Bradley. That would have been the fourth turnover for Georgia. Three of them interceptions. I don't know where David Green's throwing the football, but Scott Bradley knows where he's throwing the football because he's reading his eyes. He does a great job of breaking down the football and getting underneath the receiver. Now, Green either doesn't see Bradley or, he's, like Coach Rick said, coming out of halftime, he's throwing a low ball. He's got to throw that ball with a little bit better trajectory. There are times where he is inconsistent throwing the ball. Third and 19. And they convert on third down. And Terrence Edwards. A 24-yard pickup on the play. Well, he's throwing the outcut all night, Mark. We just talked about it. You see Terrence Edwards. Waltz gives him so much respect. You got to know where the sticks are if you're a corner, and you can't let that wide receiver push you that far up the field without getting close on him and challenging him a little bit. Green. Incomplete and a nice pass breakup by Ralph Perrin. And second down and 10. That's a huge third down considering that Georgia batted 
yeah. on third down conversion during the season. To convert a third down almost sticks a knife into Boston College. They need a turnover here or this game could get away. Second down and 10, and Boston College, remember, with just one timeout remaining. Haynes. It takes a village to tackle him too, Chris. Yeah, see the gold the gold helmets aren't aren't going to the ball like the red helmets. You don't see 11 gold helmets running to the football. You watch Georgia's defense, you see 11 red helmets going to the football. I think this team's a little bit tired right now. One because Haynes is, is carrying people with him. And we have a man down on the field for Boston College. Haynes, meanwhile, has run the ball 23 times for a total of 113 yards. To go along with one touchdown. That's Guthrie. Defense of that one. More consistent performers on defense. Ron Haynes, a transfer from Western Kentucky. Gives you a lot of yak, as they call it. Yards after contact. Georgia fans traveled very well to this game, Chris. Yeah. We're looking down below us, and it is an ocean of red. Georgia red. A crowd of over 46,000 on hand here in Nashville, Tennessee at Adelphia Coliseum. We're going to take a short break. Holly will have a report on the injury when we come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the 2001 Music City Bowl is brought to you by Nashville. Have you thought about visiting Music City USA lately? And by Acura. Experience the performance today at your local Acura dealer. Look just off Commerce Street in Nashville, Tennessee, downtown, and last night it was the Battle of the Bands. Somebody's got to step up on BC's defense and make a play. Third and three. Flag down. Gibson has the first down at the 37-yard line, but will it stand? That's the question. And it's against the Eagles. So they'll move the chains. And you know what, Chris? We noted it during the last break. The Boston College defense of Tom O'Brien seems to be just a little bit fatigued right now. Yeah, they're, they're tired, Mark. And, you know, there's got to come a point in time when you have to step up Outside, and challenge them. Defense, penalties decline, first down. Because David Green is hitting the outcome. That's the weakness of his own defense in an eight-man front. If you have your quarterback hitting the outcut, then you got to come up and challenge those wide receivers and make them throw deep. First down and 10. Georgia certainly has the speed at the receiver position to go deep. That's Musa Smith. And you hear the Georgia fans going, boom. Well, and, and, and Georgia's offensive line starting to take control of that front now because Smith did not get touched by anybody in the gold helmet until he was five yards downfield. And you can just see the defensive line of Boston College in the backpack. You gotta start getting penetration. A five yard gain on first down. Nice play. You talked about penetration. They got it right there, Chris. And yeah, they did it with a corner blitz. Sheen coming up and getting a good shot on Veron Haynes. And they're in a third down situation again. Sheen, the guy that's been described as the big surprise of the defense on the corner. He's a tough, tough kid. He comes up as a good hitter. Made that nice, excellent form tackle and that punt coverage. Now you got Sheen and Gibson working down here. I guarantee you David Green's looking right down here. They got 6-4 against 5-10. Guthrie back in the ball game for Boston College, meanwhile. And a good open field tackle that time by Walls at corner. And it's fourth down for Georgia. Both at about five to go. The green wanted to go to Smith there on his check down. See, he wanted to go to Smith. He goes to his outlet. That's a nice tackle by Walls on Gary in the open field to keep him from gaining the first down. Take your time out. Take your time out. Make sure you get a play call that you want. 
for them. Play clock's not moving. Game clock's moving. Play clock's not moving. There's Bradley saying, let's get the game clock moving. <laughs> Bennett wondering, meanwhile, if he's going to get an opportunity to kick another field goal for Georgia. They use their first time out of the half. We'll be right back. Next to the bowl menu, the Huskies and the Longhorns from San Diego. And since this is Verge Friday, as in the convergence of ESPN.com and television, Enhanced TV, Jim Donovan and Dick Tomey breaking down the game plans live during the game. Just think about it. You have four coaches to second guess now, not just New Hazel and Brown. Boy, Chris, armchair quarterback galore. Fourth down and five for the Bulldogs. Ten play the drive. Fumble. And Boston College has it. Smith thought it was a play action. Green thought it was a handoff. Now you take a timeout to get the play that you wanted to get called, and they don't get it. That's a big, huge mental error, which if you're going to be a great football team, you can't have, especially, Mark, after you take a timeout to call the play that you want to call. Mark Rick wondering what exactly went wrong. Let's see if we can find out. It looked like Haynes slipped and fell. Uh, Smith, Smith, but Smith, Smith fell. Yeah, but... Even though he slipped, he, he he didn't have his hands up for that football. And his eyes were, he, he, he was looking to block somebody or check that. Look, he didn't know the ball. Yeah. If Fourth, he knew it was a run, he knew it would have known that it was a fumble. Fourth turnover of the game for Georgia. Boston College with the ball in its own 37. St. Pierre to pass. Green out of the backfield. Almost intercepted. Stride for stride with him was Boss Bailey. That big, big boss man. Not, I'm not talking about the wrestler. I'm talking about big boss man Bailey, the linebacker, running with Green, the tailback, showing great recovery speed. Here's man-to-man -man coverage. Look at looking lean. He got that arm up there across Green's arm and does a good job of getting his head back toward the football. Now, St. Pierre's timing is off. That ball was late. He's got to throw that football when Green has a step on him. Doesn't give big boss man time to catch up. Boss Bailey playing that one. Like a champ, yes. Like his brother. Brother, champ. <laughs> brother did some corner check. Told me looking lean. <laughs> Second and ten. St. Pierre wide open, hitting the tight end down to the middle of the field. At first down at the 43. Sean Ryan. A day in the Bible was a smart football coach. They had that play open twice. St. Pierre didn't deliver to Ryan. Now Tony Gilbert, the middle linebacker, is absolutely, totally responsible for this. It's cover two. You see Phillips back there. The other safety's back there. Curry. There's nobody covering tight end because those guys are worried about the wide receivers. The middle linebacker has to take the tight end in the middle of the field and cover two. First completion by St. Pierre in 10 attempts. Flag down and Green is tackled right at the line of scrimmage. Offsides again on the hard count. St. Pierre has been able to draw the defense offside a few times tonight. Well, tonight at 8.30, Capital One Bowl, we continue on ESPN with the Culligan Holiday Bowl. Major Applewhite and the Texas Longhorns taking on number 20, Washington. Defensive standout Larry Triplett. And during the game, log on to ESPN.com and play first Friday with our coaches Jim Donnan and Dick Tomey. That game coming up in about 25 minutes' time. First down and five now for Boston College. Dedrick DeWalt lined up in the slot this time. Green on the stretch play, the zone play. Brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Tony Gilbert that time, Chris, atoning for that earlier error. Yeah, yeah, it was a great job by Tony Gilbert, a big guy that's 247 pounds that could run, defeating the linebacker and making the play. Right here's Tony Gilbert. There you go. Run that way, Tony, because you see the blockers. They're getting past the offensive guard, running through the block, and making a great open field tackle. That's how you play middle linebacker. That's a nice job of coming back, Tony. Second down and six. William Green, the lone back. Uh, you, you know, you, you might want to go back to Ryan again, Mark. We're sitting back here in cover two. Underneath to Burke. Pushed out of bounds right near the first down marker, about a yard short of it. And there's a miscommunication back in that secondary. Curry screwed up, because Phillips went back to go to cover three. They were going to rotate the coverage. What I mean by that is show a cover two look before the ball is snapped. Then, right before the ball is snapped, Phillips was 
call for Curry to come up in that eight-man front. That time they had no safety deep because one was playing cover two and one was playing cover three. They got to get communication back there. If you have miscommunication in the secondary, that leads to points. Third down and one to go for the Eagles. Camilla and Green out of the eye. They struggled in short yardage situations, but they looked to pass. Incomplete, in and out of the arms of Ryan. So with 6.25 to go, fourth and one, Tom O'Brien with one timeout remaining. That Jermaine Phillips coming from the safety spot does a great job. Saving his buddy right there. That's his buddy's coverage. That's Thornton's coverage right there because that's a deep third, which when you have a safety that has the range to get over there, you can get it. St. Pierre thinking that Ryan could have caught that. He's got to deliver that ball a little bit quicker. 0 for 1 on fourth down today. They'll try it again on fourth and one. Green looks to have gotten it this time. They went to Green last time on fourth down, and the Bulldog defense stymied him. Well, Georgia's defense has done a great job. They gave up the 78-yarder, and you, you, you don't want to, you can't take that out because that's a great run by Green. But other than that, he's only averaging close to three yards a carry. Right. They've done a great job of swarming him and gang tackling him. We'll bring the chains in and measure. And they're, Coach O'Brien, they're getting a little nervous right now. By the length of the football. Now you, now you can relax. It's <laughs> called a TG. They're pulling the tackle and guard out there, blocking down with the tight end, and Green does a good job of keeping those leg drive. Uh, to me, according that angle on that pitcher, you got a generous spot. In the second half, it's been a tough going for William Green. 14 yards. That's outstanding defense. First and ten for Boston College. To Walt. They're going to rule it complete at the ten-yard line. Dedrick DeWalt, the senior. That was a nice shot by St. Pierre right there on the skinny post. It's a timing route. He knows Dedrick DeWalt's going to be there. He throws it to the hash mark, only where Dedrick DeWalt can catch the football. It's a great pass. Ryan St. Pierre waited two years to get the starting position. He sat and watched Hasselbeck do his thing, but now it is St. Pierre's turn, and he's poised and ready to take advantage of his opportunity. Brought down to the 70-yard line by Curry, the free safety. He can run a little bit. Yeah, he can. I'll tell you, Curry can run a little bit, too, because he came out of nowhere to secure that tackle. That's a good job of St. Pierre, though, gaining four yards on a play where Georgia had a blitz on from the backside. St. Pierre recognized it, saw everybody's back turn. Why? Because it's man-to-man -man coverage in that blitz, knowing that he can gain some positive yards. But Curry recognized it, did a great job of closing. Second down and goal for Boston College. Two tight end formation, a single back set. Green. Touchdown, Boston College. Green carries with a touchdown. Critical fourth down conversion, and now a seven-yard touchdown run to give Boston College the lead. They lead 20 to 16, and keep in mind, Georgia missed an extra point, which would make it a field goal advantage only. Boston College's offensive line hasn't won a lot of battles tonight, but it won the battle here. Green doesn't get touched, does a great job of cutting back and scoring points. Be right back.
and buggy ride. I hope our producer, Brian Carter, and director, Bob Fatteroli, have that waiting for us instead of the limo, huh? Yeah. That, that's their idea of a limo when they say, we'll send the limo for you. They bring us a horse and buggy. Boston College with a four-point lead. Edwards on the return. And tackle at the 24-yard line. Important that the Boston College defense, Chris, had an opportunity to rest a little bit during that last drive, using up a bit of time on the clock, because prior to that, the Eagle defense was on the field for a long time and looking tired, I might know. You're right, Mark, and they did need to rest. Now, if you're looking at the clock, it's 433. You don't have to go to a hurry-up offense. Why? Because you've been successful running the football against the tired defense. Now, this comes to a battle of guts right now. Who wants it more? First down and 10 for Georgia. Haynes tackled at the 27-yard line by Scott Bradley. Scott Bradley almost had himself an interception on the last drive by Georgia. Scott Bradley's last football game as an Eagle captain has played a heck of a football game tonight. Tough on the run, excellent on pass coverage. Good football player, smart football player. Three-year starter for the Eagles, second down and five for Georgia. Green brought down at the 30-yard line. About four yards short of the first down by Tom Martin. Don't forget, folks, coming up next, more on Capital One Bowl Week. It's the Culligan Holiday Bowl. Number nine, Texas. Hey, Major Applewhite getting his first start of the season against number 20, Washington. Mark right up after this game. Third and four. Haynes got the first down and then some. Tackled at the 42 by Ralph Perrin. Your Boston College, you're all right with that. Why? Because it eats up time off the clock, and Georgia needs a touchdown. Because of the missed extra point, they're two possessions down. They need a touchdown, not a field goal. Field goal doesn't help them. First down and 10. Michael, the big tight end. Pick up about nine. Green, meanwhile, 21 to 35 after that completion. Go along with a touchdown. But Michael going to think about his future immediately following this game, whether he's going to turn pro or not. Second down and one. The big fullback, JT Wall, running like a brick wall. <laughs> Guy's got cement as a body. Again, Mark, you're watching Georgia. There's no panic. Green's keeping his composure, and they're sticking with their regular offense. Green's composure reflects that of his head coach, Mark Ritt, former quarterback at the University of Miami. And quarterback coach. Blitz coming. Complete to Gibson. Tackled immediately at the 37-yard line by Trevor White. All right, they came with the safety blitz, and Trevor White was smart right there. He played off. You don't want to give anything over the top. He did a great job of open field tackling because Gibson could do some damage. Could have broke that tackle. That was six points. 2.20 to play in the fourth quarter. Green putting it up for a jump ball. Flag down, but who's it on? I, it looks like to me, I, I, I think it's offense. I really do. Because Walton's going up with the football. He was looking for the ball. Yeah, it's going back. That was against Terrence Edwards. You're yeah. not going to out-jump six-foot, four-inch walls. No, that's not a bad job by Terrence Edwards either. If, he's got to turn into the defensive back here because... You can afford, in this situation, you don't want it, but you can afford a penalty. What you can't afford is the interception. So you're Terrence Edwards. That's not a bad play, Terrence. Don't worry about it. That's a smart football play. You don't want to give up the pick. Walls thought it was on him for a while. Offense, interference, 15-yard penalty, second down. The margin is four points in BC's favor. But keep in mind, folks, that Georgia missed an extra point after a touchdown in the third period. 
by that much a game of inches it is yeah, and, and that that was set up by an offside penalty mark which moved the ball five yards back further Haynes corralled at the 48 yard line by Levin two minutes to go in the fourth period now Georgia with two timeouts remaining Boston College with one as Haynes limps off the field now you're going in your hurry up mode He's a key part of their offense. They can't have him out for long. Musa Smith comes in in his place. Third down and 12. They've got to get to the 36. Almost intercepted and incomplete. Walls and Bissett teaming up on the coverage. Yeah, Bissett did a nice job. Didn't have a deep threat down here toward Georgia's sidelines. His head goes right to the deep end and helps his buddy Walsh, who had over-the-top coverage, where Bissett was sitting underneath. That's a good job of both guys converging on the football. A stop here for the Eagles, and they might have their first win over a ranked opponent in 22 consecutive games. Fourth down and 12. The punting unit comes in. Jonathan Kilgo standing at his own 38. I don't know. You got to take a timeout, maybe rethink this here. With 132 to go, Mark Richt has a whole box and bag of tricks up his sleeve. You know that. Delay the game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth out. All right, now, if you punt the football, you have two timeouts to stop the clock. Then again, that means you won't have any time to stop the ball if you get the ball back. Fourth and 12. Boston College has nobody deep. Smart, let them kick it, down it. They kick it away. And they're unable to prevent it from going into the end zone. It'll come back out to the 20 on a 53-yard punt. Don't forget, coming up next, Texas against Washington in the Culligan Holiday Bowl. That's a, that's a gamble. That's a gamble. Strategy. It, it, it is interesting. Now, they have to stop them here and hopefully either get pressure. The idea is to try to block the punt and get field position, but you're in fourth and 12 on Boston College side of the field. You got to go for it with a minute 30 to go. I'd like to go online right now on Verge Friday yeah. and find out what our coaches online think. Jim Don and, and Dick told me about that strategy. Yeah, well, you know, it's one first down away, it's over. First down and 10. Boston College on the brink of the Big East's fourth consecutive victory in this classic. And William Green is the guy they've been riding without a saddle all night long. William Green, the junior, 6'1", 215 pounds, perhaps playing his last game at Boston College. They'll take their timeout. Georgia with just one remaining. And Boston College with a timeout remaining. Boston College coming into this game with a chip maybe on both shoulders, which could tell you they had an even temperament. <laughs> they were a little upset that a lot of people were asking about that streak. This is a big game for them. Uh, this is this is one that they took personally because they've been hearing it from everywhere that, yeah, you guys are, are good enough to compete with the big teams, but you're not good enough to beat the big teams. This is a ranked team, Georgia, very talented team with a lot of great athletes. This is a game, hopefully, that will propel them into the next level of college football. And hey, no, it's not good enough to compete anymore. You train to win these games, not train to compete anymore. They've been motivated by a lot of factors during the course of the season earlier in the year. Their motivation was based in part on the fact that some of the prognosticators picked them to finish in the middle or lower half of the Big East Conference. So Tom O'Brien, their head coach in his fifth year, has used that and other things as fuel. Right now, they're on the verge of defeating Georgia, number 19 in the country. And all BC's points have come off turnovers tonight, which is huge. It's one thing you always want to capitalize on is turnovers and scoring off turnovers. Second down and seven. A 
William Green. Trying to protect the ball and brought down at the 21-yard line. Green taking his time getting up. He has been a workhorse today. It'll be third down and about eight to go for Boston College. Coach Rick choosing to save his timeout for when his team gets the football or after this play, you're going to have to stop the clock. Now, if you're Boston College, obviously you're going to look at the clock, you're going to run it down, you're going to snap it with about two seconds left. Everybody up there to stop the run. Green again. There they go. They stopped the clock. On the 23-yard line. Georgia now out of timeouts with 25 seconds to go. And what a night it's been for William Green of Boston College, perhaps playing in his last collegiate game. Left, right, outside between the tackles. He's been performing in a stellar way for BC. Had the one long run for 70 yards. And William Green is our Capital One player of the game. Look at that acceleration. He had a little candy for everybody on that run. Well, he's certainly impressed tonight. I know a lot of pro scouts were watching tonight to see if this young man decides to come out. Is he the back we want on our football team? A young man, Chris, that has endured a lot of adversity in his very young life. Losing his mother and father when he was very young, just a teenager. He's very close to his grandmother and his uncle right now. Those are the two people that will help him determine whether he goes pro or not. He looks to Coach O'Brien, too, for a lot of advice, and that's a, a good man to get your advice from. Now, now if ever you need pump protection, it's right here and right now. And I guarantee you out there, they'll tell them, be solid on your pump protection. Don't be in a hurry to cover anything. Make sure you block. Hold your block. McMiler, the punter, has had two blocks this year. I just saw a parent.